Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? The International Conference on Language, Education and Teaching Research for ICLAT about to begin. For this reason, we would like to inform for all participants to get ready. Today, we will have the virtual academic online presentation session and the attendees joining from around the globe. Hope this fourth ICLAT can inspire many scholars and researchers to be involved actively in the research and international scientific forum actively. Before we start the program, we would like to inform you about the general rules during the conference for the virtual participants. Firstly, ensure your computer sound or volume control is at an appropriate level. You may not hear the conference if it is disabled or turned down. Use a headset or earbud if available to reduce external noise. Identify your Zoom account with your actual name. Use the fourth iCloud Zoom virtual background. The committee will type the link again in the chat box because later we will have the virtual e-group photo together. Stay seated and stay present. Do dress appropriately. Be aware of your surroundings. Do not intrude other speakers. Do not make distracting sound or movement. Next, fill the attendance and letter the feedback form and the committee will also type this link in the Zoom chat box or you can simply scan the barcode as shown in the screen. And for the last, Please respect. The key to a successful virtual international conference is to remember that you are in a meeting. Give your full attention to the participant as you would if you were in the same room. Don't be distracted by another task so that you can be prepared to actively involve in the session. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a great honor for us on behalf of the International Conference on Language, Education, and Teaching Research for ICLAT. My name is Vidyo Ratno Adiani to be standing here as a Master of Ceremony in this International Conference, and welcome to each and every one of you for being here with us today. Before we are going to the main programs, let me read out the structure of our agenda or the conference program of International Conference on Language, Education, and Teaching Research for ICLAN. After this, we will have welcome remarks and global research ecosystem introduction, following to the keynote speaker session, then continue by the virtual academic presentation parallel station. After that, we will have a short break while we recapitulate it before we go to the awarding session and finally the closing remarks. As an additional information, on the awarding ceremony, we will announce the award for best presentation and the session chair recognition. So we recommend to all the participants in here to stay until the end of the conference today. Now, without further ado, let's open our agenda. It's an honor for me to inform you that among us here, we have Her Excellency, the conference chair of fourth ICLAT and founder and chairperson of Research Synergy Foundation, Dr. Hendra T. Dwi Mulyaningsi, Her Excellency Founder and Director of Global Network Operation, Research Synergy Foundation, Mrs. Santi Rahmawati, STMSM, Your Excellency the keynote speaker, Dr. Rasmita Dila, MPD, from Universitas Juanda Bogor, Indonesia, Your Excellency the session chair, Assistant Professor, Dr. Gina Gore Jackson, from Gulf College, Sultanate of Oman, and lastly, of course, our excellently distinguished guests, delegates, faculty member, all participants of Fort ICLAT ladies and gentlemen. Once again, good morning and welcome to the International Conference on Language, Education and Teaching Research for ICLAT, which is organized by Research Synergy Foundation, supported by the Scholar Fane, Reviewer Track, Research Synergy Institute, Research Synergy Press, F1000 Research, Cogent Open Access Journals, and Taylor and Francis Group. The virtual international conference held on today, March 26, 2024, through Zoom platform and streaming live on YouTube. The conference theme for fourth ICLAT is embracing technology in multilingualism and pedagogical methods in changing educational landscape. We are welcoming all participants in the fourth ICLAT coming from over 10 countries around the globe and background to have discussion 
and networking on the conference. Next two days on-site academic presentation session of the fourth ICLED is also supported by the session chair from Gulf College, Sultanate of Oman. We welcome all the strategic partner from the Research Synergy Foundation and members of the Research Synergy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem Network to fourth ICLED. We also welcome all participants, scholars, researchers, and practitioners from various countries, such as Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, India, Bangladesh, Oman, Jordan, Pakistan, and many more. We believe that the fourth ICLAD, you will gain a lot of insight through the knowledge obtained from the multidisciplinary field of study that uh, will be lead to fruitful future collaboration and research opportunity. We are sure that the discussion in this international conference today will be a lively and interesting one. Therefore, we will provide all the participants and attendees to discuss further about the research presented in this fourth ICLAD in our Global Research Ecosystem Community Platform. In this platform, you can connect, interact, comment, discuss, and even find the opportunity to collaborate with other scholars in your research field worldwide. To join the Research Synergy Foundation Community Platform, simply scan the QR code shown on the screen or sign up using your email account on the link https globalresearchecosystem.com. Furthermore, in this fourth ICLAD conference, we would like also to invite all of the participants in the education area to take part in our latest program for REACH, Research Indulgence Collaborative Hub. It's a discussion program for researchers in education area. This program will have eight sessions via the website community of globalresearchecosystem.com. There will be research proposal and publication opportunity for this from this program also. Therefore, please do register at the link bit.ly slash reach edu discussion because there will be selection phase and limited seat for the participant. Please note that this program is free to support the knowledge acceleration among the RSS Global Research Ecosystem Community Platform. Next, regarding the material of the conference, the virtual background conference program and abstract book can be accessed at bit.ly slash fourth dash material. Next, for the Q&A and e-certificate, Q&A can only be asked after the speakers have finished delivering their speech. The moderator will arrange a time available. Therefore, for the participant, please write your question and the name of the speaker that should answer it. And then for the e-certificate for attendee or audience will be provided for participant only registered in the global research ecosystem platform and actively involved in asking questions or giving feedback in the session. Once again, please fill the registration or attendees form as can be seen on the screen. You can simply scan the barcode or use the link that's shown in the screen. And the last for the video and audio. All online participants are required to mute their audio. The host has every right to mute any participant's audio and remove who are deemed disruptive without warning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and attendees of Fourth ICLAB, moving on for the next agenda, we would like to invite Mrs. Santi Rahmawati, STMSM, as the founder and director of Global Network Operation, the Synergy Foundation to give the welcome remarks and global research ecosystem introduction. However, before that, allow me to read her profile firstly. Ms. Santi is a founder and global network operation director of the Research Synergy Foundation. She actively engaged with scholars around the world for strengthening the global research ecosystem. As the director of Scholar Fame, she creates, maintains, and develops the integrated system for managing international scientific conference and forums since 2017 up to 2021, and already give benefit to more than 8,448 participants coming from more than 85 countries. With the combination of engineering and management science educational background, she has built the optimum workflow for scholars to contribute more to the society and humanities. Ms. Santi receiving her Bachelor in Industrial Engineering from University of Indonesia and Master of Science Management with focusing on Entrepreneurship and Technology Management from Bandung Institute of Technology in 2015. 
She also collaborates with ITB and Victoria University of Wellington, New Zealand, on a project that focuses on how informational technology startups acquire finance support in developing economies. Ms. Sandy has appointed as a gateway advisor in F1000 Research and Open Research Publishing Platform with Scopus Q1, and Taylor and Francis Open Access Advisor with Scopus Q1 and Q2. She has already been an editor of two published books, both published by Rutledge and Taylor and Francis, a reviewer in many reputable international journals, an author and co-author multiple research articles and book chapters. Ms. Sandy also served as the managing editor for six international journals, such as EJPJ, EJS, EJS, JSTP, Ichmadik, and Jihasi. All right, Ms. Sandy, good morning. Good morning, Ms. Setna. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. All right, it's so glad to meet you today. So from onward, please welcome Ms. Sandy Rahmawati. I'm sorry, Miss Andy, you're still on mute. Okay. So once again, good morning to all of the participants and of course to our honorable keynote speaker, Dr. Rasmita Dila. Thank you so much, Doc, for being here with us today. And also we have Assistant Professor Dr. Gina from Oman. So thank you so much, Dr. Gina, also for supporting the Fort ITLAT. And of course, all the participants, scholars, researchers, and I believe there, there are also practitioners yeah, coming over 10 countries around the globe or even more to have more discussions in this Ford ITLAN. So allow me to share the screens regarding the global research ecosystem. So why this is important? Let me make it full screen first. All right, so I hope that all of you can see my screen right now, yeah? Okay, so once again, welcome to the Ford ITLAN or the Research Energy Foundation Global Research Ecosystem. So I believe some of you already know about Research Synergy Foundation, but perhaps uh, some of you also, this is the first time you know about the Research Synergy Foundation. So in this lovely morning, so in this uh, in this good opportunity of the Fort ITLAT, allow me to introduce the global research ecosystem to all of the audience of the Fort ITLAT. So the Research Synergy Foundation is a digital social enterprise platforms. So actually we focus on developing and also strengthening the global research ecosystem. So towards the outstanding global scholars and how we work is actually we are building the collaborative networks among the researchers, the scholars, the practitioners, the lecturers, even the government and also the industrial sectors. And of course, to make a knowledge or to accelerate the knowledge and also to give impact and also we can contribute more to the society and also humanities. And this is an example, example program that we already held uh, since 2017 up to the present. So this is the previous program. For example, this one is with the Halal Science Center, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand in Bangkok. So we currently in this year, we will have a fifth year partnership with them and we have the annual conference every December so we, um, so all of you also we are inviting you later on to be come to Bangkok for this conference with Jalalongkorn University and this one is also with another university in Indonesia and this one is Model University in Dubai back in 2019 before the pandemic so actually for more the profile and also the track record and also the program that we already conduct for the research and education Foundation, you may access it in our social media, in our YouTube channel, or even in our official website, which is the researchenergy.org. And this is the founders. So allow me also to introduce all of the founders. So the founders, we Research Energy Foundation has the three founders. Yeah. So we have the Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaningsi as our chairperson of Research Energy Foundation. We have also Miss Annie Wahyu Rahmawati as the director of publication, and me, Sandi Rahmawati, as the director of the global network and operation at Research Energy Foundations. So, if your university, if your uh, institutions wants to have or wants to foster a collaborations, international collaborations, and also institutional engagement with the Research Energy Foundation, so feel free to contact me. 
Okay, so basically RSF was born because we are really aware about the challenge that we are facing, particularly in the higher education sectors and related with the research and also the publications. And although we have, uh, we are fortunate because currently we are having this forum, the Fort Eichlet, where we are gathered together here and we have a discussion and we have the networking. So actually many of our uh, colleagues, many of our uh, society also did not have yeah, the opportunity or even they, they, not, they didn't know about the, the access even yeah. So they have a limited opportunity and also access in terms of the knowledge sharing medium. And the most important things is actually how the scholars or the received or uh, the scholars or the researcher receive a feedback. So because the feedback is really important, it's really matter of, for your research. So if you get a full feedback or if you have a less feedback, it will affect the quality of your research paper. So I believe that all of the presenter here that already pass the review process, they get the constructive feedback. And moreover, for the, for the presenters particularly, at last, after this conference is end, you still have to face the post-conference uh, process, yeah, which is to determine the international journal recommendations. So at the post of the conference, you will also receive another full feedback regarding your paper. So hopefully by those feedback, you can do improvement. You can make revisions before submitting to the journals. And uh, we believe also that uh, if we are wants to write and also we want to publish in a high impact journal, in a scopus, in a web of science or other any reputable indexer, you have to know the editorial requirement. So most of us or uh, some of us are not um, aware or there are a huge gap because they don't know actually what kind of editorial requirement needs, what kind of editorial uh, wants uh, of your papers, particularly if we are aiming for the high impact journals. So in every scientific forum that Research in IG Foundation has, particularly this international conference, we will give those parameters to you at the feedback, at the post-conference process. So after the conference finish, after you send your full paper, there will be a feedback, there will be a guideline so you know how to improve your paper better. And of course, another challenge is regarding the managing the international journals. And this is also one of the challenge that faced by the university or by the organization that wants to have their own legacy in terms of having their international journals. So in the Synergy Foundation, we also uh, provide the managing of the international journals for the institutions toward the reputable indexer. And by worrying about uh, this uh, challenge in the higher education, we make the value. We make the value through the collaboration. So that's why it called the value co-creations because it's among our stakeholders. It's not only among the individuals, the member of the Research Energy Foundations, but also the university partners and also our uh, affiliate publishers and also the government, the industrial, and so on. So through the synergy, through the collaborations, so hopefully that we can bring the benefit, we can bring the impact to all of our members. And of course, last but not least, is our ultimate goal is to create a social impact. And because if we talk about the research and we talk about the publications, there will be no stop uh, phase. Yeah, I mean, it, we should always improve from time to time from time to time. So that's why enhancement in every of the process of the research and publication is a must. So that's why we want to create more impact. We want to create more collaborations with all of you that are already coming today in a Fort ICLAC with individually, institutionally, so welcome. Because we believe that if we work together yeah, in this ecosystem, so we can accelerate the knowledge and we can also give the real impact, of course, to our society. And Research and Education Foundation is actually born, was born in 2017. And up to the present, it's more than 30,000 scholars. And actually the member is coming from different uh, continents around the globe, from Asia, Australia, Africa, America, Europe, and more. And since the pandemic, actually before the pandemic, we are having the international conference in 15 countries 
around the globe. But after the pandemic strikes at the early uh, 2020, yeah, early 2020, so we shift to the virtual and also we start again the hybrid conference, yeah, where where we have the face to face uh, event and also the online session also with all of the participants in the conference since 2022, and after that. Each year, the number, the increasing number of our member that already participated in our program is more than 5,000 each year. So the uh, the number is being doubled, tripled, and so on, yeah, because there is no boundaries at all, yeah, after the pandemic, yeah, because we can meet uh, virtually, there are no border in terms of time, there are no border in terms of visa and everything, so we can enhance and we can even make it uh, faster, yeah, for the international collaborations. And actually, they are not only about the conference. We also have another various work and program under the Research and Energy Foundations because what we built since the early is the ecosystem. And we have the supporting system called Scholar Vade, the Reviewer Track, the Research Energy Institute, and the Research Energy Press. So all of the support system has their own program. So this is our support system. So first we have the Scholar Fane. This is the first support system that we built since 2017. And this system for the Scholar Fane is the conference management operating system, which cover all of the process since the pre, during, until the post of the conference, until the journal recommendation given. And this uh, Scholar Fane, uh, since at the end of the 2023, we already improve and we already make the integrations smoothly with our next support system, which is called the Reviewer Track. So the Reviewer Track is the hub for our community. For uh, I believe as the scholars, as the researchers, the lecturers, or even the doctoral students, you uh, still have to practice yeah you still have to practice about reviewing reviewing the paper reviewing the abstract because by doing the review you will enhance or you will um sharpen the critical thinking yeah and at the same time you will also give additional value you give the valuable value to the author so this is the reviewer track is really a good platform for you if you want to exercise if you want to get recognized also because as we know that being a reviewer is the pre prestigious one for the scholars so i also invite you to be to become our reviewer in the reviewer tracks and currently, Scholar Vane and Reviewer Track is already embedded yeah, in one system, in a research energy system. So all of you can log into the research energy system and choose the role as the reviewer if you want to practice, or if you want to sharpen your critical thinking in reviewing the papers. And the next support system is we have the Research Energy Institute. The Research Energy Institute is our learning platforms because uh, during the journey of the RSF, actually we know that the high impact journal or not even not only the high impact journals yeah the reputable international journals always having their own editorial policy or the editorial requirement at the same at the at the on the other hand they are author capacity and sometimes the author didn't know how to know even how to know yeah or even how to meet or fulfill those editorial requirement so there are a gap between the author capacity and also the editorial requirement those research energy institute were born to address those challenges to reduce the gap between the author capacity and also the editorial requirement. In Research Energy, for, in Research Energy Institute, there are various programs like a, a webinar and also the workshops and also we have a more intensive program that which is targeted to the Scopus at the end of the program. So all of the participants will submit their paper to the, uh, to the Scopus journals. So this is through the coaching program and we also have the e-course and so on. So this kind of learning platforms hopefully can help the author to increase their capacity. And regarding the webinar and also the workshop, sometimes we also, and frequently not sometimes, we also invite our colleagues from uh, Taylor and Francis, from Emerald, and also from other reputable uh, publisher to give their insight. Yeah, Like last, uh, in the last, uh, in this month, yeah, second of March, yeah, we have also the webinar, uh, which is conducted hybridly from Manila and also from online or uh, in the online. We are inviting Taylor and Francis and also Emerald, yeah, to give 
their perspective in terms of uh, publishing in a high impact journals. And also in the uh, in the next support system, we have the Research Synergy Press. So Research Synergy Press is actually our own publisher, the publisher under the Research Synergy Foundations. And currently we have 20 peer review indexed international journals. Yeah. And the indexation is various. Yeah. Uh, so some of them are under the Scopus evaluation, some of them are Copernicus, Google Scholar, Dimension, and so on. So we are always trying to reach and we are always trying to um, boosting yeah, the index area yeah, for our international journal. So we also welcome all of you to submit your paper also to the uh, publisher of the Research Synergy Press. And the next is, of course, the Global Research Ecosystem Community Platforms. Yeah. Since in the first year, um, in the first introductions, in the first introduction, it's already stated about the global research ecosystem.com. So this is the, like the community platform that we built that we de dedicated for all of the members, all of the members from every support system in the global research ecosystem. So uh, including the, our latest program yeah, for the education, call for discussion yeah, in the education area. So we will also launch and we will make this program in these community platforms. And um, please stay tuned. So please make sure that you already sign up using your email account. So you can, uh, you will not miss yeah, for another program. And last is of course our affiliation, our, our official affiliation with a reputable publisher. I believe that all of you already know about the Teller and Francis, about the Emerald. So now this year we are also fostering the collaboration with Emerald and for the Teller and Francis is since 2020. And they propose us to be one of the gateway in the F1000 research which is the uh, research publishing platform since 2020 and leverage more to the Cogen Open Access Journal since 2022. Okay, so this is just our infographic to uh, to give you the information that there are so many activities, so many uh, programs if we talk about the research, if we talk about the publication and how we can enhance and how we can make also the most important things is we can make the international collaborations also. So this is the root of the Research Synergy Foundations. We are focused on accelerating the knowledge through our support system. And also our main goal is actually to empower because with all of the challenge, with all of the challenge, I believe yeah, if someone is already know how to access, how to um, meet the editorial requirement, how to publish in a good or in a high impact journals, yeah, they can empower others. Yeah. They can empower others. So, Let's uh, hand in hand together, yeah, we can make uh, this uh, higher education condition in every of our country to the better man. And this is the value of each the support systems that uh, I already shared before regarding the scholar phase. We are focusing on the transparency because we are upholding all the scientific process. Yeah, I believe all of the presenter already done, uh, already uh, through. Yeah, those scientific process. Yeah, you you get the plagiarism check, you get the content review check. And even after the post conference, later on, after this, you will also get get another feedback yeah, for your full papers. And of course, there will be also the recognitions if the university or if your affiliation or organization also wants to collaborate with the Research Energy Foundation in conducting the reputable international conference. It will certainly boost the branding of the organizations. And if you talk about the reviewer track, we talk about the reliability and integrity because this is our uh, our uh, points yeah, that we are upholding. And through this reviewer track also, this is um, one of the dedication, the symbol of the dedication of Research Energy Foundation. So that's why the big publisher like the Teller and Francis, like the Emerald and so on, they trust yeah, their journal, they trust their uh, platform, publishing platforms to be part of Research Energy Foundations. And this Research Energy Institute is of course, the keyword is to do the empowerment because our way to give the learning fair route is actually to reduce those gap, yeah. And also involving actively all of you in the learning process. And last is we have the Research Energy Press to accelerate the knowledge. So your paper is more searchable and also can have a globally impactful. 
And this is the review process that we already done. So I believe all of the presenter already done all of this sequence, yeah, starting submitting their manuscript to the scholar fame. So um, this year, yeah, starting at the end of uh, 2023 until this year, we are merging between the scholar way and also the reviewer track into the research energy system. So your yeah, manuscript submit there and there will be a plagiarism check and the score for the allowance is only 20%. If more than that, you will get the chance to have uh, make revision in the first place. Otherwise, we cannot continue your paper or your abstract. And then content check, and then after it accepted or minor, you will get an LOA, then you can go to the conference today. So congratulations to all of the presenters yeah, that will present your papers today. And there will be also the post-conference review process. This is another round of review process of your full paper. So after the conference is finished, you still have the chance to submit your full paper until day plus seven. So please kindly use this opportunity to submit your full paper because there will be another uh, scientific review process applied. Yeah? There will be a plagiarism check of your full paper and also the content check of your full paper also, and that you will get a feedback, yeah, a full feedback, including the parameter. So you know, you know the capacity of your current condition of your paper, and you know what is the high impact journal requirement. So you know how to address that. Okay. And this is the example of our previous conference where all of our conference is actually uh of course, our main is actually accelerating knowledge and also empowering people where we are embracing the presenters, the keynote speakers, the session chairs, the reviewer, and also the attendees, and including this fourth I client. And the next is our journals. This is uh, our affiliation journals with the Taylor and Francis. So we have the F1000 research. Uh, for the Research Energy Foundation Gateway, so our own official gateway in F1000 research. So discovering all of the multidisciplinary, but for the review, for the open peer review, it's still aligned with your research paper. And this is what makes it more credible. And you can see the review process because the review is the open peer review. So you know the reviewer, you know the track record of the reviewer, and you can see even the comment also of the reviewer. And in also in um, the other, for the Taylor and Francis, we also have the Cogen Open Access Journals. So currently there are 11 international journals under the Cogen Open Access Journal, divided into several uh, area, research area. So for example, for this Ford iCloud, you will have the chance if your paper, the quality is good, you will also get recommendations, like, uh, can get recommendation to the Cogen Education. So, yeah, this is Q2. Okay, and also Web of Science. And these are our journals uh, by Research Energy Press. So there are 20 international journals. So you can uh, search more information in this link, yeah? Journals.researchenergypress.com. And this is the example of our paper proceedings uh, from our previous conference, which the type of the full paper proceeding yeah, or the conference paper proceedings. And this is um, our social program. So for example, like uh, we have many actually social programs since our entities is actually the social enterprise where we are also focused on our social motive in how we can enhance and how we can empower. So like this one, like the RSF International Service Program in last 2nd of March, 2024, so we are come to Manila, to Philippines, because, because in Philippines, we have so many colleagues, yeah? so many colleagues, so many friends also in Philippines. So in 2nd of March in this year, so we are coming there and, and then there are at least 19 universities yeah, coming because this is like our the GSR program where we give a free so uh, it is a free um, event yeah, where all of the university can come and also can foster the collaboration with us. And we give also more insight and also more encouragement. And also another thing is the conference grant. So every year, every year, RSF always give the conference grants to all of our university partner. And of course, our members, yeah, particularly for the young scholars, 
for the master student, for the doctor students, yeah. So they are inspired. So hopefully they can also want to be a researchers or the scholars, yeah, letters on, yeah. So this is also one of the ways to make a movement that uh, if you have the limitation, if you have the barrier, so it should not hamper you to be globally impactful because there are a lot of ways to do the research, to do the publications. And this is the International Service Program <clears throat> that we held annually. And also we held the annual Social Entrepreneurship Challenge. So this is for the social enterprise for uh, around the globe, yeah. So I think this year would be the third, yeah, will be the third Social Entrepreneurship Challenge. So usually we invite the students or the young is uh, to be involved if they have the idea or even they already run the social uh, entrepreneurship program. So we will make like a competitions. Yeah, we will make the competitions to inspire others. Yeah. And this collaboration is actually uh, regarding the uh, uh, collaborate with the Pro Compass Education and also the Macquarie University Australia. And also the next we have the paper writing collaborations. And this is also including our upcoming uh, program with the uh, Research Indulgent uh, Hub, which is the discussion for the education area. So because one of the output is the proposal and also uh, could be also the publication opportunities. Yeah, so please kindly ensure that you already join yeah, to this program. And of course, connecting research parties, stakeholders, yeah, we can also foster the collaboration since RSF uh, have a more than 100 university partners, so we can connect yeah, with each other, yeah, I mean with the university, between university and so on. And also, we can also make a connecting with the government, with the industrial and so on. So it really depends and it really custom with the needs of the partner itself or the stakeholder itself. And last is, of course, the very customized share value co-creation program, which is can be diverse. And this is the our community platforms. So please ensure that all of the participants here already sign up yeah, using your email account in the globalresearchecosystem.com because what you can do in the platforms, love. Yeah, you can connect, you can exchange idea. And even yeah, in our next program, yeah, we will also have the writing collaboration and also enhancement, yeah, particularly for the education area first, yeah. Okay, so please keep in touch with uh, the Research Synergy team, yeah? And please do let me know if you have a question or if you want to be, uh, your affiliation or your organization wants to be part of our global research ecosystem. So thank you so much for your kind attention to all of the participants of the Ford ICLED. So hopefully that all of you can have a great discussion and we can learn also from the keynote speakers, from the session chairs, and also from the presenters. So thank you so much. And I will give back the sessions to be handled by Ms. Retnov. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Andy, for your insightful introduction of Global Research Ecosystem and also for the great teamwork in supporting this international conference. All right, before we continue the next agenda of the fourth ICLAT, let us have the virtual eager photo firstly. So for all the participants in the Zoom chat, Zoom room, please activate your camera or your video so we can take a picture together. All right, we have seven slides and I will start by taking a picture from the first slide. All right, great, 3D. One, two, three. Okay, next slide. One, two, three. All right, the third slide. Fourth slide. All right, thank you everyone for all you deactivate your camera so we can take a picture together. And also for the positive energy that given through the virtual photo today. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and attendees of the fourth iCloud, let us continue to the next agenda without further ado. Now we will moving on to the keynote speaker session. The keynote speaker session will be moderated by me, with your Ratna. And in this keynote speaker session, we will have Dr. Rasmita Dila, MTD, 
from Universitas Juanda Bogor Indonesia that already joined with us. And today, she will share about the topic of student-teacher percep perception of the relevancy of theory and practice in inclusive classroom based on internship experience. However, before I will pass the session to Cherry by her, let me read out her profile firstly. Dr. Rasmita Dila MPD is the vice rector of the Research Community Service Publication and Downstreaming of Universitas Juanda. She is also a lecturer at the Department of Elementary School Teacher Education at Universitas Juanda and Open University. Focusing on subjects such as inclusive education, educational psychology, special needs education for children, technique of scientific writing, and several more. She obtained her doctoral degree from the State University of Jakarta, majoring in basic education. She is currently active as a reviewer of the Higher Education Council of the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology, and as an assessor of the Ministry of Education and Culture for assessing the workload of lecturers. She proposed the Gasuka method, which helps early learners to effectively read and write and the institutional strategy based on the brain's natural learning system for inclusive classes, all of which have received intellectual property rights. Her major research is on inclusive education in elementary school. In this topic, she already published numerous books and research published in journal. Some of her best works have already been published on Scopus, Orchid, and Web of Science. All right, good morning, Dr. Asmita Dila. Good morning, Ms. Retno. All right, thank you very much for your support and joining to sharing your experience and also expertise in here. So without sure. further ado, please welcome Dr. Rasmita Dila. Thank you, Ms. Retno, and good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Rasmita Dila from Universitas Juanda, from, uh, and also I come from uh, elementary school teacher education uh, department from the uh, Islamic religion and uh, teacher education. Um, thank you for um, Research Synergy Foundation that invite me this morning to be a keynote speaker. I have a lot of opportunities to be a lot uh, to be a keynote speakers, and I hope we can share experience and knowledge from uh, our research uh, for uh, the fourth international conference on language education and teaching research. So this is um, the platform that we can share uh, about our experience uh, again. So um, this morning, I would like to present my experience that I conducted last year. Uh, Allow me to share my PPT. Okay. Um, okay. Can you see my PPT, Miss Retno? Really? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, good morning, everyone. Again, thank you for having me this morning to be a keynote speaker, and I can also uh, share my experience that I conducted last year. This is this topic is a uh, very. Uh, bright and familiar for us, including um, us as a teacher, when our student complete their uh, study, how to make a relevancy between the theory and the practice when they, um, to be a teacher, uh, especially in inclusive elementary school. So my topic is about student teacher's perception of the relevancy of theory and practice in inclusive classroom based on internship experiences. This is a big question for a student teacher. Student teachers here, uh, maybe some of the audience or um, participant here, um, a little bit weird about the student teacher. Student teacher is a student that they have uh, uh, study in the education teachers. I mean, uh, such as like um, elementary school teacher education or early childhood education, so we call it with the student teachers. So um, I repeat about my question uh, just now that this is a big question, um, including my, my students. Uh, 
why my theory, all the materials that I grab in my study is irrelevant with the practice in the inclusive edu inclusive classroom. So I and my student conducted um the 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 research about this topic, and uh we conducted this research uh, this research. Uh, based on the experience from my student that they conducted the internship in the elementary school, uh, especially the in inclusive elementary school. So uh, before we move to uh, this topic uh, further, I would like to explain a little bit a little bit about the internship for student teachers, especially in the uh, elementary, education or maybe early childhood education. Internship is very important for every student teachers. Uh, this is the step that they will complete their education, their study mm -hmm. in the uh, department on the or maybe the faculty. Why internship is very important for all the student teachers? Because internship uh, would be uh, that they can gain direct work experience in various fields within a supervisor supervision period. So from the internship, uh, they can uh, they can implement the theory from the lecturer from uh, the the experience when they uh, get the all materials, especially uh, for the inclusive education subject. Uh, in their department to be uh, to be real in the inclusive classroom. Uh, uh, of course, this is uh, under the supervision from the lecturer and then the classroom teacher. So this is how to implement their theory when they have all the material from the subject, including uh, inclusive education subject. And then provide education, especially in inclusive education, to implement and improve their academic knowledge and skills. Sometimes students, they don't know uh, that, uh, do I have my uh, academic knowledge and skill when I uh, am as a student? But when they have to do the internship, they realize that they have to increase their uh, academic knowledge and skill. And of course, they have to uh, increase the other materials when they have to uh, handling the student with the special need for the example. And also to take part in the real project or assignment related to their field of study, the relevancy of the theory and the practice they have received in the lectures more deeply. So sometimes for the credit, it's only uh, for, for the example, inclusive education in my department is only three a credit. Sometimes it's not doesn't enough to the student to um to be have more more uh, the competency or skill when they have to be a teacher in the future. So uh, from internship, they have more experience. They they can make implementation between the theory and the practice or uh, in the field. I mean, like uh, inclusive classroom. So they have they they receive or accept what the uh, the needs uh, actually from the uh, classroom teacher. Uh, as a problem that the classroom teacher have faced every day, uh, especially how to handling um, the student with disability and also a typical student in one classroom. This is very uh, difficult to hand to handling uh, the student, all the student, including the uh, special need with disability. So from the internship, our student, especially student teacher, they know what is the uh, what is the weaknesses, how to increase their academic uh, knowledge and skill when they have to be a teacher in the future. 
So this is uh they they get the more beneficial from this uh program. I mean, like uh, internship. Of course, there are some others activity that uh student teacher have to undergo before they complete their study, just like a community service or the other program. Uh, yeah, this is the benefit of the internship for the student teacher. So what is the goal of the internship for the student teacher? They have the opportunity to see firsthand the use of ideas taught in lectures translate into real world situation. Sometimes the student don't know how to, maybe uh, based on the theory, they, don't, they know how to handling, for the example, autism student, ADHD student, uh, when they have a discussion in their classroom. But when they have to do the internship in the real situation, like uh, inclusive classroom, and then they suddenly don't know how to handling this student, how to handling the autism student because it different um, approach when they have a discussion between their friend in the classroom, I mean, in the, in the university and then the real situation in inclusive classroom uh, in elementary school, uh, especially in inclusive elementary school. So this is a good opportunity for the uh, student teacher how to make the real situation from the classroom teacher that the classroom teacher has always faced the problem in their classroom. And then immersing student teachers in the real world situation and problems of inclusive school. Some of the problem from the uh, classroom teacher um, today, uh, student teacher have to know because they are a candidate teacher for uh, in the future. So from the internship program, they don't know they know what is the exact uh, problems that they must be faced in the future when they uh, complete the study and to be uh, to be a teacher in the future. So uh, now student teacher as a candidate of the teacher, they have to know, they have to make identification, what is the real problems? So they have opportunity, they have, they have um, the time to increase the academic knowledge and skill when they uh, already to be a teacher in the future. And then help student, student teacher acquire and master new skills to solve complex problem in inclusive classroom. Sometimes uh, our students shock when they have uh, conduct the internship because they don't have um, enough they don't have a bit a uh, skill to handling the student uh, before they uh, go to the inclusive classroom. Uh, for the example, when they have to do like observation inclusive classroom, they don't have any problem before. But when they have to conduct the internship, they have a new problem that they don't have a competency to hand to, to make uh, solve this problem. So this is a new skill. Uh, they need to increase their skill when they uh, conduct the internship. And then get the innovative thinking, critical analysis and application of knowledge. Internship is the best way for student teacher to beside the, beside the implement uh, the academic knowledge and skill and also when they face the problem together with the classroom teacher, how to handling all the student, typical student and also uh, in, uh, student with disability, they have to think how to make all the student with the all characteristic, with the a different characteristic, but they have to teach all the student without discrimination with the all competencies. And then they have to make critical analysis 
how do all the students have a fair uh have a fair um teaching how to make uh, all the student they have a good discussion they have a good learning to be a good student when they have a problem with the behavior uh, how to handling the student for the example when the autism student they temper how to handling how to make the autism uh, autism student uh, they can they can study they can learn together with the typical student this is a, a bit difficult to a student teacher how to make a good a positive psychology positive cognitive to all the students so they have a competency how to think how to make a critical analysis and also applicate uh, and then they can uh, implement implement and uh, uh, make application of their of their knowledge from their study in the university and the last to provide an accurate picture a global picture for a student teacher when they work as teachers in inclusive school so that i mentioned before the internship the output of the internship is the the input for the student teacher uh, when they have when they um, to be a teacher in the future how they can handle uh, all the student um including student with disability and also typical student because inclusive classroom is how to teach all the student so this is a uh, a big picture for the student uh, i mean a student teacher how to how to learn how to um, give their competency to all students and also work together with the classroom teacher, uh, solve the problem. And this is uh, challenging for the student teacher from the internship. And from this problem, we conducted the research and we have some research problem here. Uh, for the example, uh, from the interview from the student teacher, our student teachers, uh, they told me uh, for the this problem, uh, for the example, lecturer still providing lecture material that is not needed inclusive school. Yeah, I do believe that sometimes the lecturer only use the material of year per year. It's the same materials we don't um, see what is the inclusive classroom in the elementary school needs. Sometimes the lecturers don't know what is the real materials that, uh, I mean, like uh, based on the uh, problem that classroom teacher always face in their classroom, in the inclusive classroom. So this is the problem, uh, that one problem from student teacher that we interview. And then lecture only provide lecture material that doesn't change from time to time. That's I mentioned sometimes lecturers don't know and maybe they, they don't want to change what uh, the materials need um, that's relevant with the uh, implementation inclusive elementary school that the classroom teacher always face every day, every year that uh, make a problem in inclusive classroom. The lecture material is only theoretical and less applicable to the students. Yeah, the lecturer sometimes uh, because for the example, they, they, they don't know what the materials, uh, the needs of the material exactly then uh, from this um, this problem, sometime um, the lecture only how to make this subject complete without know what the exactly uh, applicable material and then have a relevancy with the uh, the needs of the classroom teacher, the needs of what of the uh, all the student. Uh, needs in the inclusive classroom. So this is the one also 
uh, a problem uh, for the student teacher when they have to do the internship in the inclusive elementary school for the example. And then the proportion between theory and the practice obtained during lectures is not balanced. Most of the lecture maybe for the example in uh, in the one subject for the example inclusive education subject from the 14 meetings maybe it's only uh, 10 until 12 is most theoretical than uh, practical for the student teacher for the example, maybe they can do observation to the inclusive elementary school to see what is the problem in the inclusive classroom actually. So this is a problem with the uh, to the student teacher when they have to conduct the internship pro uh, program uh, in the department. So uh, this is uh, this are uh, the research problem that we uh with with what we do with what the student teacher interview uh from that we conducted for uh from them and what is the relevancy between the theory and practice uh in um uh, instructional um activities in inclusive classroom so for the first one, practice essential components in implementing inclusive education with classroom teachers. So this is the best way when we uh, want to know uh, between the theory and the, and the practice from the educa inclusive education a subject for the example, uh, what present uh, we can we can look at uh, that this subject uh, have a lot of beneficial for the students teacher when they have to conduct the internship. So practice is essential components. How to measure? How to win? How how we know that the inclusive education subject. Uh, have a successful uh, subject for the lecture how make the uh, how make the uh, comparison between the theory and the practice from the inclusive education uh, subject and then student teachers gain real experience in solving problems that teachers usually face this is very important for the student teacher that they can uh, see what is the problems that classroom teacher always face every day in the inclusive elementary uh, classroom. So adapt to the needs and the problems usually faced by teachers in inclusive classroom. So from the uh, problems that the classroom teacher face every day so student teacher can adapt how to solve the problem and then they can make uh, a list uh, the problem and then solution when they, uh, when the classroom teacher face the problem and then they know how to make the solve the problem and then help teachers improve the quality of interaction in inclusive classroom. Since uh, our teachers, I mean classroom teachers, especially in Indonesia, uh, based on the different background, uh, most of our teachers in Indonesia not come from the inclusive education basis. So some of the teachers, for the example, they don't know how to handle the special with a special students uh, or student with disability. And from this internship program, student teacher can um, share the knowledge, can share the academic from the lecture, from their uh, lecturer, 
how to make how to solve the problem and then how to make identification all the student and then they don't then and then they know who is the student tend to be a student with the special need so the classroom teacher can improve the instruction and then teacher can improve how to handle student with the with student with disability for the example and then provide new knowledge for teachers to carry on instruction by the characteristic of inclusive uh, classroom that i mentioned when teachers know how to for the example identificate uh, all the student that tend a uh, student with disability and then teacher can create the lesson plan how to teach the instruction to be better than before and then uh, they can make the muscle learning for the all the student including for the student with disability so this is uh we can say what is the relevancy between a theory and a practice in instructional uh, inclusive classroom And also uh, here, we have a recent objective that explores student teachers' perception of the relevancy of theory and practice in instruction in inclusive classrooms that have implemented internship program in elementary school. This is our uh, recent uh, objective. And we have also methodology that we conducted uh, we have case study here uh, and, sorry. Yeah, we conducted case study for our research, uh, the implementation of uh, internship program by uh, student teacher in collaboration with classroom teachers in uh, inclusive classroom uh, is explored in depth uh, so that we get the relevancy and differences between the theory and the practice in inclusive classes. And then uh, we had 15 participants uh, as student teacher and they all in the seventh semester that receive inclusive education courses in the fifth semester uh, and they conducted four weeks uh, or one week with the five teaching days and every day for three hours. And student teachers got a conversion of uh, six credits from the internship program. And we collect the data from the semi-structure uh, interview, open-ended, of course, with the student teacher within one week with the three students at the time using the Zoom application for a, approximately one until one uh, half hours. And from the data we collected, we analyzed the data uh, with the thematic analysis from the Clark and Brown uh, with the six stages of the thematic analysis and we produced uh, two main uh, themes. So we conducted uh, six stages uh, from the first step until the six stages uh, from the clock and brown. So we had uh, two main themes, uh, namely external support and internal support. This, uh, this table that we can see here is uh, about the a thematic analysis for the example that we make uh, uh, for the first stage for the example, uh, understand the data. So we collect uh, from the interview with the student teachers about the their uh, output from the interview. We made uh, the transcript and then we make uh, a data keywords from the 25 keywords for the example, uh, apprenticeship and then student with the disability interaction and so on and we make uh, the from the keyword and then uh, from the keyword we make the sub themes and also uh, we have uh, just like initial code uh, for the example for the second stages from uh, this stage 
So we had uh, 70 coders and then we uh, moved to uh, the other stages until the six stages and then we made a report of the research. So this is um, the first main themes uh, is external support. We found that the external support um, relate to school readiness. So what is the uh, keyword from the school readiness? We had um, class teachers and that interaction, collaboration, study time, the availability, uh, the availability of special assistant teachers. So from this uh, theme school readiness, we have uh, some of the sub themes. Uh, from these sub themes, we had explanation for each of the sub -stems. For the classroom teachers, we uh, highlight that the uh, role of the classroom teacher uh, is a very important, how to handle of the student. And then interaction is the more important uh, themes uh, as well. How the uh, classroom teacher have a good interaction between a student, a typical student, and also the uh, student with disability. So interaction uh, is a key for the classroom teacher to know what is the what is the um like uh, competency that student had and then also uh student also uh had mastery learning for each of the instruction and also collaboration is one of the most uh important key uh in the inclusive classroom instruction uh there always every uh, materials that the student and uh, teacher have to do is about how the, the classroom teacher make collaboration, how to a uh, classroom teacher make uh, instruction to the, all the, the, the student in the classroom. And then always, and then also student, uh, typical student and the, uh, a uh, student with disability, they make collaboration in, uh, for the example, discussion to uh, discuss all the materials and then also study time and uh, also the affability of special assistant teachers. Study time is related to how the classroom teacher handle the material of the subject uh, uh, from the, the first instruction until at the end of the classroom uh, have to uh, end. And also the availability of special assistant teacher is one of the difficulty of the inclusive elementary because, uh, because they don't have a special, uh, special assistant teacher to handle, to handle the student with disability. So sometimes it's uh, a bit difficult to the classroom teacher to handle the, all the students. So uh, this is the school readiness that the student teacher learn from the internship. For the internal support is uh, we found the three uh, sub themes, strengthening inclusive education practice during lectures and then mental readiness. Um, for the strengthening inclusive education, is strengthen the theories practice in inclusive classroom. So this is input for the lecturer, how to strengthen the theories, and then also how to practice the theories in inclusive classroom. And then the uh, student teacher uh, hope that the theory can implement to be a practical instruction in the inclusive classroom when they conduct the internship. And sometimes not for the internship uh, only. Sometimes when they have uh, a task from the lecturer, they have to make observation into the inclusive classroom so they can implement uh, what actually they have to do in the, in the inclusive classroom. And the second sub theme is about practice during lectures balance between theory and the practice during lectures need for particular practice. So this is uh, this sub theme 
uh, still have the relation between the uh, with the uh, first uh, sub themes. So um, between the theory and the practice, uh, there is the relevancy uh, both of them. So uh, uh, between theory and the practice during lectures, uh, the input from the student teacher to the lecturer, uh, they have they have to make uh, beside the internship before the in internship conduct. They have uh, uh, the real activity like uh, observation, community service to the inclusive classroom. And then they have a new skill. They have a new experience when they have already to be a teacher in the future. And the last one, the internal support is about mental readiness. The complexity of the inclusive classroom handling students with disability both in instruction and outside of the interaction. So this is very important for the, the student teacher when they have a little shock when they conducted the internship. Uh, they don't know how to handle the student with disability because they don't have a enough experience in the in their study in the university because it's just theory it's not enough about the theory because when when they conducted internship they have a lot of, of uh, they have a lot of experience a lot of the student with disabilities Sometimes in the theory, they only learn about the autism, ADHD, uh, and then a slow learner. But uh, when they conducted internship, they face a lot of more and more students with disability, more than they know when they learn in the, in the university. For the example, how to handle with the student with the uh, dyslexia, how to handle student with the um maybe um let's say about the uh limited mobile limited uh, their their mind and also uh extra uh, etc so this is uh like a mental shock for the student because they don't have a good preparation because they don't have a good practical when they uh, study all the material from the inclusive education courses in the university. So this is the uh, finding from the internal support from the uh, uh, theme, uh, main theme for our finding. So what is the conclusion from the, our research? For the first thing, the relevancy of the theory obtained by student teachers during lectures in the form of inclusive education material provided by lecturers must be able to put into practice by student teachers by the needs of instructional standards in inclusive classroom. So this is uh, input for the lecturer when they have to create the material for the inclusive education uh, courses. Uh, for the example, the lecturer have to know what is the needs from the, for the example, a classroom teacher. So they have input, they have to uh, listen from the classroom teacher and also student teacher that conducted the internship uh, program. Uh, what is the actually the, the, the needs of instructional standards? So from these needs, lecture can create the best materials for the inclusive education uh, courses. The second conclusion is about the success of the internship program for student teachers in inclusive classroom is determined by the balanced preparation of the student teachers, both in the theory and practice and inclusive education courses by implementing course reinforcement in pre-internship activities. So this is the need for the lecturer and also the department, uh, especially to our department, before the student teacher conduct the internship, 
it needs to the student teacher doing some like a pre internship for the example uh, observation uh, for the inclusive classroom and then make a project based learning for the student teacher and then they know what is the real problem uh, in that program and then they have a good preparation when they have to conduct the internship uh, program. So this is a good input uh, for the lecture also for the department in the university to increase uh, academic knowledge and also skill for uh, student teachers. And the last for the uh, my conclusion is the high relevancy of theory and practice in instruction in inclusive classroom is determined by the increasing number of creative solution used by student teachers and classroom teachers in solving rolling problems in inclusive classroom. So uh, more increasing number of creative solution based on the problems that student teacher and classroom teacher face in the inclusive classroom that the, that the standard of the uh, successful of this uh, internship uh, program. So all of this conclusion is the best practice, is the best conclusion for the lecturer, for, for the um, our department, for the classroom teacher, and also uh, for the inclusive uh, school as well to make a good standard for the uh, inclusive school and also a good quality for the student teacher in the future because they are a candidate for the uh, for the to be a teacher in inclusive elementary school so this is uh, my last slide and thank you for your attention and i open to discussion if you have any question from my uh, research. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mita, for such a really insightful sharing from your latest uh, research, uh, which might be really related in present situations such as placed by the student teacher that found a difference in the real world versus the theory that they learn during the class. So this condition also appear in the Zoom chat box. If you see, there's many people that sharing their experience that uh, show how this topic is related to them. And also, we will continue in the Q&A session. I see that there's first question that coming from Misa Miss University, parallel relation. From your experience, Dr. Mita, what additional support or resource do you feel would have enhanced your ability to apply theory to practice in inclusive classroom? Okay. Sorry, can you repeat it again? All right. So uh, the question that coming from parallel relation, from your experience, mm -hmm. what additional support or resources do you feel would have enhanced your ability to apply theory to practice in inclusive classroom? Hmm. Okay, good question. Uh, thank you for the question. Yeah, um, beside the internship or maybe before they conduct the internship that the, uh, I, I mentioned before, uh, it's need to the student teacher have a, a good experience such as like uh, make observation and also make a, a project-based learning for the example for the method, uh, instructional method. And then uh, it's to be uh, input for the lecturer uh, from uh, based on my experience. Uh, for the example, we have 14 meetings in the inclusive education courses. Um, and then from the 14 meetings, uh, I have uh, ap approximately or, or um, around five until seven uh, activity that students have to 
a go to inclusive classroom. They make observation and also make a project based learning. They can interview the interview the teachers. What is uh what the, actually the problem that a teacher always face in the inclusive classroom, and then they make identification and also create uh the make identification in the first uh, is the first step for the student teachers uh, and then they have a new skill i mean uh, for the first thing is make identification from identification they know what is the student with uh, the 10 uh, special uh, need student and also from this uh, identification they create a lesson plan they create uh, like uh, IEP, Individual Educational Program, and then uh, they make, uh, they choose instructional, uh, instructional method uh, from this lesson plan, and then they choose what is the interesting media, and also they make uh, uh, assignment to the student and also uh, mastery learning score. Uh, even they don't have a mastery learning score for the student, uh, for the student because uh, I, I mean, for the student with disability, because they have a lot of uh, limited uh, characteristic, but they have a descriptive um, report for them. And this, this, uh, this stuff is very important for this classroom teacher when the student teacher have these experience like uh, identification, how to make a lesson plan and also how to create a uh, instructional method and also media and also assignment. This is very important for the student teacher experience. And then they have, um, and they have um, um, a good opportunity to implement or practice this all experiences uh, during their practicum in this uh, course. I mean, uh, in uh, inclusive education courses, and then they can share this experience to the classroom teacher. And then uh, it's a good collaboration between a student teacher and the classroom teacher. And then they can solve the problem together, how for the example handle to the student with the special need. That uh, from my experience when I uh, teach the inclusive education courses uh, to, uh, to my students. All right, Dr. Mita, such a really comprehensive answer, but uh, the point is um, doing observation is really helpful to make the student teacher especially can realize the reality and also uh, by doing collaboration, it will become more smooth if they already know the reality that they will face, right? Yeah. Okay, continue. There's many questions, so we will only select um, several questions. Um, the second question that coming is uh, from Ms. Mangal Dan NHS. Um, is it applicable in the public education system for implementing this? Of course, um, some of the problem for the example in Indonesia, the problem is uh, the problem with the inclusive uh, inclusive education most in Indonesia is in the public uh, school. And um, the problem that always faced the by the teachers, uh, just uh, I mentioned like uh, how to make, how to know what is the characteristic from the all the student because the student because the classroom teacher don't know how to how to know how to identify the characteristic of the all the student and the the student with the ten uh, with disability so. Uh, this is very help. This is helpful, very helpful uh, for the student teacher and also uh, classroom teacher uh, to know how to identify. For the example, uh, then this is this is the main problem uh, because uh, since the classroom teacher don't know how to identify the characteristic of the student in their classroom, and then they don't know how to create the classroom with the interesting and and create the classroom to be to be uh, fair without discrimination, and how to create the lesson plan especially to the student with disability. So uh, from this problem. 
from this problem they don't know how to make a, a report what is the what is the uh, learning that the all the student can be uh, can can be achieved at the end of the lesson so uh, this is very important for the classroom teacher uh, when the uh, internship program conduct with the student teacher i think this is very important for the public uh, for for the public school yeah all right so uh, maybe we can continue to the next question and this one will be the last question because wow. Because there are still many questions, Dr. Mita, but yeah, we have yeah. still lack of time. I, I know this is a very interesting topic, especially to the teachers, but you know, it's a limited time that we have. So I I, I appreciate for the uh, all the participants that make question here. So we next to the next question. All right. So this question is coming from Miss Ira Fila Soto. This one is relate with the previous one. How do you communicate with parents that their child has special needs? And how do you handle parents who are in denial of their child their child having those special needs? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is um this is the main problem that classroom teacher always face every day in the inclusive classroom. For the teacher, how to identify the characteristic of their uh, student in their classroom is the most difficulties that they have to face. They don't know how to identify the characteristic because they come from the back, they, they, they come from the different uh, background. For the example, uh, the classroom teacher that teach in the elementary school, uh, they don't they don't have a background for the uh, teacher education. Sometimes uh, they come from the, um, you know, something like um, a subject teacher. Um, whereas the, the, the teacher in the classroom teacher that, that teach in elementary school, they have from the, they have to come the background from the elementary school education for the example so when they have to teach in the inclusive classroom uh, since our government uh, indonesia uh, issue the regulation that uh, every elementary school have to accept have to receive the student with the special need it's to be difficult to them how to handle all the student they only know how to handle the typical student and and then when they have to face and and have to handle the student with the special it it's to be difficult to them so uh yeah that that's very very uh, important to the classroom teacher how to have to um a, a good competency a good a good skill to handle the student since uh, the characteristic in the inclusive classroom they they come from the different characteristic students um, for the example maybe in the inclusive classroom they come from the autism adhd slow learner and also dyslexia um, and also from the you know like um, uh, another syndrome that they don't know how to handle it and the other problem is how to communicate uh make interact a good interaction between teacher and the and the student also it's a uh, difficulties uh, for the for the teacher as well and also for the parents uh, most of the parents in inclusive classroom is the parent they they denial yes of course uh, i think this is the main problem in uh, inclusive classroom over the world that I have experienced when I discuss with my colleague from the other country about the denial of the parents, how to communicate uh, that that they have a, a special need student, they have a special children, and um, the best way that the stu that the teacher can do uh, how to make a good interaction with the parent is. Uh, always make uh, make um, collaboration and make uh, 
a meeting with the student with the parents uh intensive meeting with the parents and uh, give the explanation to the parents that they have uh children with the special need of course uh most of the parents have uh, a denial about this situation but uh, we have to make a collaboration also with the psychologist and then sometimes it's 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 work when the when the psychologist uh, give explanation to the parents so we can make a meeting between the parents and also uh, teachers and also psychologists make a, a smooth expe explanation to the to the parents uh, how to handle the student how to make a, a explanation what is the the parent have to do handle the uh, their child in in their home and also uh, the progress of this uh, uh, achievement that teacher uh, doing in the classroom and it also make it make it uh, good communication to the parents uh, i think that's that's work uh, in some kind of the school i mean in inclusive uh, school but yeah we have to do a massive we have to do uh, every day every uh, day per day what is the achievement that the child uh, doing in their school and also uh, their home all right, thank you, Dr. Mita. That might be the last of our question today. But mm -hmm. from uh, the session that we have today, I want to take a note maybe that from the presentation, I get that it's such a really challenging for the teacher in the inclusive classroom that coming from a different characteristic. Mm -hmm. And from your study also, we realized for student teacher by doing observation before teaching in the field, uh, in the field is really helpful to make their can realize the real situation. And the last one that coming from the last question, uh, maybe can provide many insights for the rest of the participant in here, that the communication and collaboration with all parties, Dr. Mita mentioned about parents, psychologists, school committee, and of course the other teachers can help and become the main um, main solution then can help the su successfulness of inclusive complete classroom, especially for the student with the special needs. All right, thank you very much for the insightful session, Dr. Mita, and also Good. for the rest of the participants who provide many questions. I see there's a lot of questions that have not answered there, but don't worry, even though we are lack of time, but the committee will also accommodate the rest of unanswered question, we will send to Dr. Mita to answer this question and we will um, send the answer to the RSF Global Research Community Platform. So the discussion will not stop only in this conference. Mm -hmm. All right, once again, thank you very much, Dr. Mita, for your time and for being here with us today. And now onwards as the recognition and appreciation from the fourth ICLAT committee we would like to give token of appreciation to Dr. Rasmita Dila, MBD. Therefore, please welcome Mrs. Santi Rahmawati as the founder and director of Global Network Operation Research Energy Foundation to give a token of appreciation to Dr. Rasmita Dila, MBD as the keynote speaker. Okay, thank you, Ms. Retno. Okay, so as the recognitions and also the appreciation from the organizing committee, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Rasmita Dila, for being here with us today and also giving a very insightful um, topics and I think which relates to many people, yeah, including me actually, <laughs> including me. So this is a really interesting topic, yeah, and we we believe also that from the chat we can see that the response to your keynote speech is really positive and that's why we will continue the discussions with you of course in the global sure. research ecosystem community platforms and also uh, dr rasmita dila for all of the participants in the port iclab is will be the research leader yeah or the team leader that will lead the research in Delgan's uh, collaborative hub which is the discussion for the education area 
So all of us will continue. <clears throat> Sorry, all, sure. all of us will continue again the discussion and the next um, opportunity and also the output is one of it is the research proposal, right, Dr. Asmi Tadila, and of course the publication opportunity. So let's collaborate uh, with Dr. Rasmi Tadila and all of the participants of the fourth ICLED. Feel free to join and later the committee also will send again the information yeah, so we can have this program. I think after Lebaran, Dr. Mita, <laughs> after sure. Lebaran, mm -hmm. April to June. So once again, on behalf of the fourth ICLAT or the fourth International Conference on Language Education and Teaching Research, fourth ICLAT. So this is the certificate or the token of appreciation given to Dr. Rasmita Dila MPD from Universitas Juanda Bogor, Indonesia in recognition and also appreciation of your contribution as the keynote speaker today. Thank you so much, Dr. Mita. Thank you, thank you very much. And I can't thank wait you. to collaboration with all participants here. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And back to Bisratna. Thank you. All right, thank you our keynote speaker, Dr. Mita, and also Mrs. Santi. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and attendees of fourth ICLAT, we hope that the speech that coming from the keynote speaker session today has bring a new perspective, new ideas, or even new collaboration officers ahead. Now we will start the online academic presentation session. All the presenters will deliver their presentation here in the main room. So the academic presentation session will be led by a session chair, Dr. Gina Gurik Jackson from Gulf College Sultanate of Oman. All presenters, please be ready for the academic online presentation session. As an additional information, after the academic online presentation, we will have a short break while we recapitulate the evaluation from the session chair for the best presentation award. After that, we will have awarding session to announce the award for best presentation, the session chair recognition. So please give your best effort in presenting your research today. Moving on to the academic online presentation session. Today's session will consist of five presenters that coming from a different track, namely track management education, technology of teaching, applied linguistic, and teacher education practice. The session chair for today is Dr. Gina Gray Jackson from Gulf College Sultanate of Oman who already joined with us in this room. However, before Dr. Gina will chairing this session, allow me to read her profile firstly. Dr. Gina is a seasoned lecturer with 25 years of teaching experience at graduate and undergraduate levels. She joined Gulf College in 2012 as a lecturer. She specialized in teaching management, entrepreneurship, human resource, and related business study modules. She coaches students and guides them through inter-college competition and events. Dr. Gina is an active researcher and enthusiastic lecturer with an ability to work with students from various educational and cultural backgrounds. She aims to make her research work relevant to her areas of specialization and in her background and teaching. She has to her credit a doctoral degree in management from Capital University and she completed her master degree in management from Iligan Medical Center College and bachelor degree in management from Mindanao State University, Philippines. She is a licensed teacher recognized by Professional Regulation Commission and a government career service professional in the Philippines. Before joining Gulf College, she has served a reputed higher education institution in the Philippines in the capacity as an extensive senior lecturer, as dean, and as research director from 1996 until 2012. She is a certified reviewer at the Muhari Oman. She is an enthusiastic researcher with several research publications and presentations executed nationally and internationally. Dr. Gina teaches innovation and entrepreneurship, HR strategy, and professional practice, strategic management, managing and leading change, work experience, PDP, and operation management. She also guides final year UG students with their project work. All right, Dr. Gina, thank you for your support and for being here with us today. From now onwards, I will pass this session to be led by you. Now, this is your time for sharing the session. Please welcome Dr. Gina. Thank you, Ms. Wedjeritmo. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my honor 
to appear before you today as the session chair for the respected research gathering for the fourth ICLET. I will be a rapporteur through the session for a smooth and productive exchange of knowledge and ideas. As a session chair, I will facilitate meaningful discussion, maintain the timing and ensure each presenter has the opportunity to share their research findings. I believe that research is a collective sharing of knowledge and ideas crucial for advancements in any field. I am committed to uphold the standard of professionalism and fairness throughout the session. I encourage all attendees to engage the discussion, ask thoughts provoking for questions, and uh, we can foster the atmosphere of intellectual growth and collaboration. Thank you for entrusting with me this responsibility of being the session chair. Let us embark this journey of discovering together. Without further ado, I would like to gently remind our dear uh, five presenters to please uh, stick on the 15 minutes presentation allocation. If there will be some questions from our audience, we appreciate your, your, ans your answers. I believe all are set ready. Yes, over to you. Or is there any announcement, Miss? Would you, would you in two? No, Dr. Gina. We can start from the first presenter. You can call your name. Okay. Without further ado, let us begin our intellectual gathering and welcome our first presenter. Please give a warm over applause to. Han Ton uh, Nguyen, she, he is the presenter of this research title, Sequencing Relationship Among Co-worker Support, Professional Coping, Job Satisfaction, the Case Study of School Teacher. Over to you, our dear presenter. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let me start it. Um, yeah, so the, my uh, topic is uh, the sequencing relationship among co-worker support, professional coping and trap satisfaction. Um, on behalf of my research team, I would like to present our findings today. Uh, so quickly, uh, I come from International University, Vietnam National University, um, and have some uh, work experience in uh, some tech industry. Uh, so teaching is considered as one of the most stressful occupation and ha also ha as having the lowest level of job satisfaction as demands always exceed time and resources. Um, this paper aims to investigate the sequencing relationship between three variables, co-worker support, professional coping, and job satisfaction. Uh, the study may bring theoretical and practical implications on professional coping among school teachers to ultimately enhance their job satisfaction. Um, so the agenda, I will cover the introduction, literature review, methodology results, as well as discussion and conclusion. Um, teaching is a high demand and high stress profession. And uh, in the case of Vietnam, uh, teachers face a lot of uh, problems like uh, low salaries, level excessive workload and conflicting um, demands from different stakeholders. So in such context, teachers use coping strategies to reduce the prevailing pressure. Um, and recently, according to the Ministry of, of Education and Training in Vietnam, there is a deficit of nearly 100,000 uh, teachers and more than 40,000 uh, teachers reside from their positions over the past three years due to the uh, above mentioned uh, reasons. 
the reality of in Vietnam for short of uh, their well-being benchmark and uh, previous research also highlights the importance to solidify connection between teacher stress, coping strategies and as well as teacher well-being. Specifically in Vietnam, there are also studies uh, called for studies on teacher job satisfaction. And to our team knowledge, why existing research uh, focuses on either the drivers or consequences of coping mechanism, the interplay between these factors remains largely unexplored. So the research paper aims to uh, um, have three main objectives. First is to examine the causal relationship between coworker support and professional coping. Second is to re uh, examine the re causal relationship between professional coping and job satisfaction. And finally, we will send theoretical implications and managerial implications on professional coping among school teachers. Mm. Okay. Uh, the next part in literature review, professional coping um, we, here in the, con uh, we will explore through the context of street bureaucracy defined as the behavioral efforts from light workers employed when interacting with clients in order to master, tolerate, or reduce external and internal demands and conflicts they face uh, every day. Um, Examples such as creaming, uh, meaning favoring uh, easier cases, uh, gaming, breaking rules, prioritizing and rationing. Uh, however, in this research, our focus is on professional active coping uh, where the public professionals use try to strengthen and use their professional authority to alter the circumstances in order to reduce the pressure. This might involve actions such as training, speaking up, and um, engaging in public discussions. Um, the pin underpinning the relationship between coworkers and professional coping uh, can be anticipated based on uh, job demand resources model as well as uh, the findings from various extant study. Job demand resource model um, explained that every job is shaped by an interplay between demands and resources, and the influence of and the influence of coworker support as a social resource on professional coping. So, uh, hence, we propose the first hypothesis is that coworker support has a significantly positive impact on professional coping among school teachers. Um, the second relationship that we expect is the causal relationship between um, professional coping and job satisfaction, uh, which has been proved not only in public professionals, but also in other disciplines, according to their findings. Um, okay, so in essence, uh, the conceptual framework uh, describes that coworker support facilitates the use of professional coping among school teachers, ulti which ultimately help them to enhance their job satisfaction. Uh, the next part in methodology, in terms of data collection, we employ the quantitative methodology using non probability sampling. Uh, we approach the target audience by li first listing out on the primary and secondary schools uh, within Chao Duc District, Barry Vũng Tàu Province. Then we gain support of the Department of Education in this province to meet the school principals, gain approval in sending mass survey, uh, online mass survey to uh, these target audience. Um, the survey was translated from into Vietnamese from the original English measurement scale. Then we adjust uh, into the Vietnamese context with the assistance of two experts. Uh, in terms of measurement items, we have in total 25 questions on five-point liquor scale. The variables were examined by different measurement, measurement items, which has been adapted from many sources. Um, so here we have a closer look into the um, specific measurement items. Okay, uh, so in terms of assessment method, we uh, aims to assess a measurement model and structural model based on the criteria proposed by Herr et al. Uh, to confirm the 
construct reliability, convergent validity, discriminant validity, and um, the path coefficients, as well as other uh, ratios. Uh, the result is that the descriptive analysis, we can see um, there are 392 total response, but we have 40 invalid cases were deleted due to missing data and low variation. So in total, only 355 valid cases remain for further studies. Um, it is also worth noticing that we, uh, our sample contains teachers with equal or above 10 years of teaching experience uh, that constitute the large proportion among respondents. Um, in terms of the measurement model assessment result, uh, we can see that all construct threshold values fall within acceptable ranges. Um, specifically, factor loading were greater than 0 0.708 and Cronbach and Sphere as well as other ratio was acceptable. Um, when it comes to measurement model assessment, uh, the discrim discriminant validity was confirmed by the results of both Fornell Larker and HTMT ratios, with the later uh, uh, the criteria is less than to what, 0 0.85. Uh, the structural model assessment shows that all hypotheses uh, H1 and 2 were supported, showing positive uh, showing positive relationship. Uh, both were found to have significant impact uh, with co-worker support having significant impact on professional coping with beta uh, equals 0 0.546 and uh, professional coping having display a uh, positive impact on teacher job satisfaction with beta equals uh, 0 0.758. So, uh, as I mentioned before, this study will bring about theoretical implication and practical implication. Uh, to be specific, uh, our research contributes to the existing literature of occupational stress with a more holistic framework. Hereby, we uh, explore the antecedents of professional coping. Here is co-worker support, and the consequence is the job satisfaction, both uh, with to positive impacts. Uh, secondly, we contribute to the understudied role of professional coping as a critical contributor to trap satisfaction amongst public professional. Here is uh, teachers. We demonstrate the sequencing relationship between these three variables, as well as add to the existing literature on frontline behavior by showing the outcome can be for frontline employees themselves if coping more effectively. Uh, in terms of practical implication, we uh, have successfully prov uh, we provide practical implications for policy makers and educators to formulate more effective educational policy. Um, to be specific, we um, we suggest initiatives to foster coworker support among school teachers because we already know that coworker support we uh, have a significant positive impact on professional coping and which in turn um, increase the level of job satisfaction. Therefore, we recommend for more informal mentorship programs to our collaborative teaching cross-cultural, cross-curricular projects, as well as professional learning communities, etc., to enhance the level of co-worker support in the educational context. Uh, moreover, we also, um, initiatives such as um, developing training programs that help to foster on the job professional coping skills among school teachers about the benefits associated with active coping strategies will motivate teachers to employ active coping strategies more in the workplace. Um, moreover, programs that foster professional coping via training, voicing, or participation in public discussions to also help to increase their job satisfaction. Um, however, it is worth note to notice that conflict and alienation may occur during the effort of using active coping. Therefore, we suggest 
uh, developing workshops or training on conflict resolution and support teacher in assessing uh, critical resources like counseling, counseling services are a system program to mitigate, mitigate the potential drawbacks. Uh, in conclusion, uh, this study have three main limitations. First is the limited generability to broader population in Vietnam because we only conducted our survey in uh, one part, uh, one region of Vietnam. So it is very sensitive to generalize to other uh, regional area, uh, to other regions. Uh, Secondly, the findings may not hold true for other high-stress public professions because each profession and each area have very distinct um, sets of challenges. Therefore, it is uh, crucial to replicate and test these relationships among other professionals. Uh, finally, the potential for common method variance and socially desirable response biases is also worth noticing because by um, Despite we use the well-validated scale, the studies still rely on self-reported measures. So therefore, future research might strive for a multi-method, multi-measure approach to um, bolster the validity and reliability of our findings. Yeah, so that is the end of my presentation. Here's the references I use for uh, our study. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Ms. Nguyen, for the enlightening, notable research that you have contributed. It gave us the insights and understanding that will open a new avenue of exploration. We appreciate your valuable, valuable contribution in this gathering of knowledge. We have one question here addressed to you, Ms. Nguyen. This is coming from, um, where is that, the first question? Coming from Ms. Elaine Grace Kapalia from the Philippines. The question goes like this. May I know what are the specific co-worker support among school teachers in this case study? Um. Sorry, can you please repeat the question, please? Okay, the question is in our, in our chat box from Elaine Grace Kapalia from the Philippines. The question goes like this. May I know what are the specific co-worker support among school teachers in this case? Um, okay, so the specific uh, co-worker support, the co-worker support um, here, uh, covers a lot of different aspects. It can refer to um, the peer support program between uh, teachers when they uh, collaborate on a school projects are specific, are moreover, it can be uh, supports between uh, uh, the senior and the junior or the um, senior who taking care of the uh, teacher intern the teach student teacher intern, uh, as mentioned in, in the note speaker, uh, yeah. So that is some examples of the how specific co worker support can be in the context of uh, education. Yeah. Miss Elaine, I hope it answered your question. Another question raised here in our chat box is from Miss Dasma. How would you go on applying these results and methods in schools that are still having the traditional methods of administration and teaching? Um, so uh, can, can you please read it again? Okay. The question Sorry. is, how would you go on? How will you proceed? with the application of these results and methods to schools which are still applying the traditional method of administration and teaching. Yeah, okay. Uh, as far as I understand from the question, the traditional method, uh, teaching method that you refer to do not uh, uh, promote the co-worker support in the context of school, right? Uh, so in my perspective, uh, 
it could be employed if we raise the importance of how co-worker support can reduce can reduce the stress level among school teachers and raise the awareness uh, of the benefits of employing more active professional coping uh, mechanism so that uh, on the individual level, they can try to adapt, adopt these uh, active coping strategies to reduce the prevailing pressure. And then uh, once, the, once the principals have witnessed the benefits among the individual level, they will um, initiate a program to uh, scale up the initiatives. Yeah, that, that's what I can see that uh, we can uh, implement the co-worker support in the context of traditional uh, working uh, teaching measure that is currently adopted in the schools. Um, yeah. Miss Anna, are you satisfied? Is your question addressed? You can unmute your mic if, if it's not addressed properly or if it's okay with you. Okay. From Miss Anna's side, nothing is indicated. So now I will proceed with the next question here with, who is this? From Otanis. The insight of presentation was an example of a coping mechanism. So then that is his gesture about your contributed information. Um, yeah, as I have uh, already given the example of professional coping mechanism here in our research, it is the active professional coping mechanism, meaning speaking up, train, uh, participates in training our uh, public discussions. Like if we have uh, we can initiate or can gather a webinar among teachers uh, at school so that they can voice their concern uh, and we can have a um, collaborative measure to uh, try to solve it on a large scale or try to share your experience or your stories, your uh, your learning points in dealing in this uh, with these difficult uh, situation are conflicting demands from different stakeholders so that people can so that teachers can learn from each other and this way we can foster the use of professional coping yeah okay one last concern here from miss azucina conde all right um, she sorry, asked about or... why is the research important what is the significance of your study? Um, yep, yeah, so the significance of uh, this study is that it contributes to enhance the level of, uh, if you uh, enhance, if you facilitate the use of coworker support among school, you can ultimately enhance the level of job satisfaction, uh, which in turn will reduce the level of burnout and turnover in the educational landscape in Vietnam. So that is how I see my research contribute to the, uh, yeah, practically and theoretically. Okay. Due to time constraints, so we will proceed to the next presenter, number two. Thank you, Ms. Nguyen, for your presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to see you with your publication for this output. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleasure to introduce to you our next distinguished researcher. In the person of M. Taslim Kialang, Kialang with the study evaluation of early childhood education learning to enhance basic competency needs adaptability with k-means method and rnn guru approach help me welcome miss taslim kelang Over to you, sir. 
Oh ya. Yeah. Uh. Good good morning everyone. Uh Can you see uh, uh my my uh presentation? Yes, sir. It's here. Oh yeah. Okay. You can make it to full screen if you want. Oh. Sorry. There are still slides at the side. Uh, you can click below there's an option in the below bar okay. on the right okay can you uh can you see uh my in fine sir uh yes My presentation is uh, it's uh, so. Yes, it's here already visible. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, for for uh, my name is uh Tamsin Galang. Uh, I'm from a student university, uh, of Computer Indonesia. Uh, and now uh, I will I will present my my uh, research is uh, evaluation of early childhood education learning for basic competency needs uh, adaptively adaptively with documents uh, and around your method approach. Okay. Uh, uh, my my content is uh, introduction or uh, research methodology uh, results. Conclusion and limitation, uh, and a uh, bibliography. Uh, introduction, uh, early childhood education is key uh, to shaping, uh, future learning outcomes, harness, uh, child absorption and rapid uh, learning ability. This study explore the relationship between motor skill and cognitive. And social and emotional development through interactive learning methods. Uh, using a uh, new new neural network technologies, especially specifically uh, and humans. This uh, research develops adaptive learning education and enable uh, the teachers to provide personality as a support and improvement of uh, learning effectiveness based on the unique uh, each uh, child. Uh, uh so, sorry uh wow my this uh lack uh identify the problem a uh, lack of effective evaluation across uh Children or uh, learning materials uh, adaptively. A uh, limitation of uh, using conventional methods in evaluation children's learning progress that have not been able to accommodate individual learning needs. The challenge in developing learning that can be personalized and appropriate to the characteristic and uh, potential of each uh, child. Uh, difficulty in optimizing the discussion of subject matter in order to explore various uh, aspects of learning based on basic competition. Uh, problem statement. How to overcome the limitation of conventional ways of evaluation children's learning progress that uh, progress uh, that have not been able to accommodate individual learning needs. How to face challenge in developing all learning programs that can be personalized and in accordance 
with the characteristic and potential of each child. How to come up, overcome difficulties in optimizing the discussion of subject matter in order to explore various aspects of learning such as uh, religious and moral values, a cognitive develop, motor, a social, emotional, art, and language. How to uh, overcome difficulty for a teacher to draw informative and mean, meaningful cons conclusion from a summative assessment related to early childhood development. A research objects overcoming the limitation of conventional ways of evaluation children's learning progress by prediction learning lear learning process so as to accommodate to each uh, child's individual learning needs. A uh, system capabilities of providing personalized learning to child or teaching approach to each child's unique characteristics and potential. Optimizing subject uh, matter to be more effective exploration aspect of children uh, abilities of be based on a system that is uh, able to predict various aspect of children's abilities uh yeah uh uh, uh, uh six uh, aspect uh, of abilities uh, religious and moral values cognitive physical social and social emotional and language uh as is a teacher in interpreting summative assessment data in informative and meaningful conclusion that accurate re reflect uh, early childhood development uh for uh problem limitation uh the focus of study was on uh, early childhood with uh and uh range between uh four to six years uh the focus of the research is on for number of school years uh 20 22 to school a uh, year and uh, 23 uh the limit limit amount of uh data is uh twenty two uh uh to the twenty twenty one as a uh, many uh ten uh, children so uh yeah uh so on uh eleven uh twelve uh, children and passes uh analysis pattern of learning before and basic competition le level of early early children in several aspects of learning. Uh, this is this study focus on the analysis of learning evaluation pattern on the level of basic competition of each in a uh, learning aspect. The evaluation aspect to be examined include uh, basic competition data based on the children's grade. Uh, analyzing using a uh, model tensor TensorFlow and uh, Python libraries. Uh, research use uh, the need uh, for evaluation of early child childhood uh, learning uh, objective evaluation of the teacher of the child in a summative assessment analysis pattern of early childhood uh, learning before in the analysis of the scope of neural network technology a uh, research creates a prediction of children in a learning based on the basic competition competence uh talk uh uh for less uh provide additional insight in neural network technology in uh education uh education childhood uh research uh research methodology for uh research design uh this res this research design use of quality qualitative by uh, secondary data from the teacher summative assessment. Uh, the focus of variable analysis is the sub aspect of learning ability based on basic uh, competition. It's in intent to real reveal children's tendencies in various aspects of abilities. Uh, yeah, uh, six uh, aspect of abilities is a religious, moral, uh, value, social, emotional, cognitive based physical, social, art, and language. Uh, that, okay. This uh, 
processing uh, my my uh, my research uh, the first uh, transports data is important for the uh, uh, horizontal uh, data uh, to the uh, vertical uh, data uh, is easily to the uh, uh, more uh, accurate for the the uh, 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 what uh, mm, a prediction uh, uh, value compares value conversion the uh, conversion of the summative value to a numerical value is an important process in uh, the questional uh, assessment it's part of the that process using a methodology that uh, rnn optimized with the chemist algorithm the blank value the blank value of the process data does not have a missing value so the lost data does not need to be deleted because it useful for increasing uh, data accurate uh, duplicates uh, values uh, it's very important to re rebox the child value that that's uh, that has been a clean sheet the data uh, data check uh, after that uh, this uh, for the uh, step uh, uh, the last step is uh, the data number of NEN in the data is more than zero, then the process handling loss data will be run. Uh, this is a summative value. Uh, BB uh, is a uh, uh, an uh, un undeveloped uh, MB uh, start developing uh, BSH growth as expected uh, BSB very well developed. Uh, data this uh yeah this uh that data checking uh this uh processing yeah uh for by the uh, rules uh location of the time research uh in a uh uh school uh uh ECE the this is uh important for by my research uh for the learning programs is a uh, competition is 46 uh this uh, example the aspect uh, of abilities uh this uh, competition uh and i am is uh, the religious fellows uh, moral the uh physical social is uh have a competition uh, basics uh, social emotional uh, arts cognitive and uh, language is uh, uh separate uh, by uh, basic competition uh, 46 uh, research uh, tools and materials uh, use uh, python uh, pandas for the processing uh, tensor flow for the prediction and methodology to the uh, representation uh, uh, by uh, the step uh, before uh, the prediction, uh, we we need to the uh, clustering uh, use uh, the key means, uh, use uh, elbow methods to uh, centrate for cluster G uh, denote by uh, this is uh, the rules. Uh, after that, uh, the uh, second step uh, the determine. Uh, cluster with the uh, uh, every cluster uh, have a category uh, after that uh, the token nation we uh, uh, what's uh, the cluster uh, description uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, this is uh, algorithm it is uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, so hard for the for the uh, implementation for the this uh uh chemist and uh ann this uh determination of chemists to start data optimals uh, after that uh initial initial op 
optimal cluster uh, tier, tier C uh, and now uh, uh, we the we need to the uh, tokenization for the bra the throughput throughput the the uh, for the la layer emb embedding and now uh, embedding layer are used to convert the integer index of word into the vector dense uh, this is uh, the role uh, uh, now uh, the second layer is the zero dropout we need uh, to 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 layer for the GRO and the uh, need a uh, dropout layer uh, now uh, the first step uh, the last step is a uh, dance dance the layer dance consists of as many neural number as the number of class in this uh, study using the layer function output uh, used uh, for softmax for layer output use uh, softmax standard for the calculation the probability of the characteristic prediction of uh, for uh, each time interval t a uh, t is a uh, time iteration uh, and characteristic uh, key in uh, alphabet uh, this is a uh, deeply uh, processing uh, update git can uh, after that uh, the candidate candidate hidden uh, uh, reset git hidden uh, drop out uh, uh, we need to uh, encoding by uh, the determination uh, by the the to uh, tokenization uh, that data load uh, retrieve that uh, data from a child follow uh, this step uh, so the process fitting labor encoder and on the data and transfer the child value column into the encode values. Uh, Mr. Tasneem, uh, Mr. Tasneem, yeah. excuse me. Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. I would just like to remind you that the time limit has been exceeded. So I want you to wrap up the remaining slides that you have there. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. You ended up, so that's the end. You did not cite the conclusion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, for this uh, conclusion, uh, this study was able to predict uh, accurate based on the weight of the secondary data is uh, used. Uh, it should be noted in the evaluation of the effective of the prediction results so a high level of accuracy to prevent overfitting of the training data process. This study used the callback, early stopping, and reduced RN on play two uh, method to uh, monitor the training process and just the learning rate or stop early this research needs to use the callback principle on tensorflow because the data use is a limit uh additional uh this uh the k is my program in is research is us uh, follows uh firstly a uh, pre-processing of data is carried out using the first semester data followed by the keymes method to clustering value data based on determination uh, after that is it is processed in tokenization which is used the embedding layer of the rna gro before reaching the embedding layer the first semester data is uh, defeat, defeated into training on Test uh, data. The, the test data here remains the same that is from the first uh, semester. Only the is the data process for the embedding layer to the data training process. Uh, from here, we 
a model pattern is created that will be used for the sequential pred prediction of data from the second semester. The process of the second semester in terms of the tab pre-processing and determining its key means is the same as the previous uh, process. We, uh, we can see uh, the result prediction in academic years uh, is wake, wake is the same in uh, original in academic years. Uh, but uh, this, uh, uh, it can be seen in the picture of the prediction result in the aspect of ability which is calculated based on the amount of prediction. This uh, prediction use six indicator of ability and, uh, aspect in the uh, uh, 13, uh, namely uh, FS, S, B, C, K, and ONM. Uh, the weight of the prediction data is in accordance with the weight of the original data. The same is true of all predictive results, a uh, capability aspect where the integrity of the data weight is maintained between the predicted data and the original data. There's also explanation of the adaptive learning evaluation program they're designed to make it easier teacher to compile student report card statement. This is a program aim to provide tools in the evaluation uh, process. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Ta Taslim. <laughs> it's because we are running out of time and you are already... Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your sorry. allocation has already <laughs> been finished. Thank you, Mr. Taslim. <laughs> Actually, there is a concern here with Ms. Majoretno about the challenge that you have experienced. Can you share just very briefly what is the challenge that you have faced when you conduct this research very shortly so that we will be managing the time then mr taslim apakah memerlukan translate oh yeah, yeah. dr gina i'm so sorry is it all right if i help him to translate it into indonesian language so no problem you can all right Uh, jadi, Miss uh, Patas Lim, ada pertanyaan. Um, topik riset yang sangat menarik. Nah, Patas Lim, apakah bisa sharing apa saja sih challenge yang dihadapi atau hambatan yang dihadapi ketika melakukan riset ini? Secara singkat saja, Pak. Oh, iya. Jadi, uh, se sebetulnya uh, dalam riset ini itu uh, programnya sangat rumit dan uh, membutuhkan banyak uh, uh, mo modular yang yang di ditumpuki dalam suatu uh, RNN. Ya. Dari uh, RNN itu adalah merupakan uh, jaringan syaraf tiruan yang dimana biasanya dipakai buat uh, prediksi. Nah, jadi uh, aplikasi yang saya gunakan yang yang dalam riset saya ini adalah menggunakan aplikasi uh, di mana aplikasinya itu uh, sangatlah uh, jarang ya. Gitu. Ya. Yeah. Alright. So the answer for this question from Mr. Taslim is this research uh, have a program that quite difficult. And it needs a lot of modular that can get from the RNN. So the application that used in the current research is quite um, difficult. That might be the main challenge that faced by him and his team. Okay. All right, Dr. Gina. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Tasni, for your contribution. Without further ado, we will continue with our next, because there are no other questions on the chat box. We will continue with our next presenter. We have another researcher who is ready to share the cutting edge of the findings with her or who? With her research entitled Analysis of Smart Apps Creator, Media Needs as an Effort to Increase Career Self-Awareness for advanced study for high school students. Our dear audience, please help me welcome Ms. Inda Setianangshi. I hope I pronounced the, the name well. <laughs> Over to you, Ms. Inda. Okay, thank you. Uh, Prof. Gina, how can my voice be heard? Yeah, 
I okay. can see your face. I can see your slide now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself in the Setianing Si. I am a student from the 11 Maret University Educational Technology Master Program. Uh, I'm sorry, am my English not good? Okay, let me my share presentation, the title of my research, this analysis of the media smart app. Apps creator HIG recruitment as an effort to enhance self awareness from future career studies among high school students. Develop of smart apps creator SIG media to increase self awareness among high school students. This research aims to overcome the problem of low self awareness regarding career among high school graduate by using innovative tools such as SAC base. I will describe in the background material abstract the phenomenon of low self-awareness regarding career among high school graduate need to be addressed properly when the effort that can be made is by you utilizing innovative tools that allow individuals to map their achievement, interest, and career goals. Smart Apps Creator SIG based media is considered to have the potential to be integrated and utilized to address this issue. Therefore, this research aims to analyze the need for the development of SIG based media to be utilized for 12 grade high school students. The method used in this research is descriptive quantitative with the data collection technique being a questionnaire supported by interview with students and counseling teacher. The research subject consists of 12 grade students at Karang Pandan State High School and when students and counseling teacher. The data analysis technically adopted for this research is descriptive with present times. The research results show that the majority of final years students feel a lack of information about career and their own abilities, just they are less able to determine a path or career that align with their abilities. Therefore, a digital media that can be accessed anytime is needed in order to with and identify their abilities with the hope of enabling them to choose a career that is relevant to their capability. Recommended that can interest students' self-awareness and support them in choosing a career path that suits their potential and interests. Okay, introduction. I'm the importance of student self awareness in context of preparing before college. The importance of student self awareness in the context of preparing before studying at SMA and Karang Pandan with the rapid development of technology. This research highlights the need for innovative approach in building state students to understand their abilities, interests, and career goals. By paying attention to the challenge in the career guidance process in school, this research order of solution in the form of developing a career guidance application that can be accessed at any time. This is hope that through this research, a better understanding will be created about the importance of student self-awareness in preparing the myself for higher educational and choosing current that suit their potential. The relevance of developing SIC based digital media as guidance tool, low level of student self-awareness regarding current information, 
personal abilities and career preferences can influence student ability to make decision regarding future studies. Therefore, the research aims to identify the level of self-awareness of class 12 students at SMA and Karang Pandan and analyze the need for developing SIT-based digital media as an active guidance tool. I'm sorry. Okay, um, I'm sorry. Uh, problem one, how do this research address the issue of low self-awareness regarding care among high school graduates? Number two, what are the key feeding regarding the lack of information about career and abilities among 12th grade students? How can SAT-based media be usually utilized to exchange self-awareness from future career students among high school students? Uh, this methodology, research mental and using this study in quantitative Descriptive approach data was challenged through questionnaires supported by interview with students and counseling teacher. This research subject consisted of class 12 students at SMA in Karang Pandan and one guidance and counseling teacher. The data analysis teacher used its description use present this research aim to identify student level of self-awareness regarding repairing before to college. The research subject considered of class 12 student as SMA Karang Pandan and Guidance and Course Counseling. Okay. Result and discussion. The result and discussion includes several important points that can be highlighted. Student number one, student self-awareness level. The majority of class 12 Student at SMA in Karang Pandan feel the like information about personal abilities, career preference, and other career information. The data from the questionnaire show the presence of students who feel the lack information about various aspects of themselves and career. Number two, the urgency of self-awareness, the low level of student self-awareness highlight the urgent need for more effective approaches in quitting students before pursuing higher education. The importance of self-awareness is helping students choose a career path that suits their potential and interests. Number three, use of technology in guidance. The use of technology such as the development as of SIT-based digital media can be solution to increase the effective of student career guidance, guidance and counseling teacher need to utilize technology such as career guidance application to assist student in the career decision making process. Number four, implication and relevance. And the result of result make a significant make contribution of the understanding of the importance of student self-awareness in the context of higher education. The implication of this research can help in design more effective guidance and counseling strategy in school. Conclude, please. How level of self-awareness among students at SMA in Karang Pandan with ultimate effect the ability to make this say. Therefore, is it is necessary to increase student self-awareness. From the ratio of the questionnaire, it can be concluded that only 45.459% of class 12 students Feel they have information about themselves while 54.51%.
of students still feel they lack the lack information about themselves. This cause difficulties for students in making decisions because they do not have information about themselves, that what they want and the strength and weakness they have. The result of interview with guidance and counseling teachers show that currently not many students are talking at fence of current guidance at school due to the look of supporting media, such as guidance application, the guidance of and counseling teacher revealed that the existence of such an application will help students expertly choose who were confused about choosing future studies because they did not need to come to the guidance and counseling room to get current guidance. Thus, the result of data analysis highlight the importance of increasing student self-awareness regarding the career and abilities through the development of digital media that can be accessed at any time. It is hoped that this will help students choose careers that suit their ability and prepare them for higher education. The low level of student self-awareness indicated the need for a more effective approach in guiding students before continuing higher education. The use technology such as the developed SSIG-based digital media can be a solution to increase student self-awareness and help the choice as an applicate career path. This, okay. Thank you. Thank you for attention. Time open for for question. Thank you, Miss Inda. Thank you for the insights that you have discovered for this research. We have here a good observation from Venmay Dengal. I just read it's it runs this way. It appears that there is a discrepancy between your methodology. In one hand, your slide indicates the utilization of qualitative method, while on the other hand, the lower section suggests the application of the quantitative method. Yes. His concern is like this. Could you please revisit your methodology and then clarify which really was the truly employed approach in this study. His concern is you need to clarify which approach was truly employed, what was truly applied in your study. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, Dr. Gina. Yes. I no. Huh. The research results show that there is low level self awareness among class uh, 12 students at SMI in Karang Pandan regarding information about career, personal abilities, career preference, future ability, and future personality trait. The majority of students feel the lack information about this matter with anti effect their ability to make designers regarding career and future students this so the need to increase student self-awareness to help them choose a career path that suit their abilities and interests. So you use the qualitative method? Yes, I'm a methodology qualitative method. Okay. In the lower section, you have the quantitative method in the application for that. Yes, I'm a uh, application for SIT. Okay, explain for, for us to clarify, please. Okay. 
proses application All right, Bu Enda, are you still there? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm to translate. <laughs> All right. Okay. Please just uh, brief us. All right. Uh, do you still need a translation for this question, um, Miss Inda? Yes. Okay. Baik. Jadi untuk pertanyaannya, um, dalam uh, metodologi Anda saat presentasi ada perbedaan. Satu slide menunjukkan bagaimana kalau um, digunakan metode kualitatif, sedangkan di sisi lain ada di bagian bawahnya ya menyampaikan penerapan metode kuantitatif. Dari Bu Endah, apakah bisa meninjau kembali sebenarnya metode apa sih yang digunakan dan memperjelas bagaimana pendek pendekatan yang benar-benar digunakan dalam penelitian Anda? Oh, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Oke, okay, thank you. Resit, uh, my research, this study is a qualitative description approach data with collection through questioner supported by interview with students and counseling teacher. The research subject when considered of class 12 student at SMA and Karang Pandan and when students and counseling teacher. The data analysis technically use the descriptive Descriptive using presentize this research aim to identify student level of self awareness regarding preparation before Collins. This research also involves descriptive data analysis using presentation to evaluate student level of self awareness regarding college preparation. Data was collect based distribution self awareness questionnaire to class group. 12 student and conducting interview with students and counseling teacher the aim to provide a clear picture of the action of student level self awareness in the context of Colin Covid. Uh, Mbak intinya di sini saya menggunakan dua metode. Yang pertama saya menggunakan kualitatif untuk mengukur datanya. Yang kedua saya menggunakan deskriptif kualitatif untuk mencari uh, sum wawancara atau untuk observasi datanya intinya itu mbak. Alright, so actually she use both of the um, methodologies by using qualitative and also the quantitative, uh, like through the interview also, right, Miss Enda? Yes. Yes, and also spreading the questionnaire. Right. Okay, that's understood by our uh, participant attendee here. She said, thank you, this was used, this study used mixed method. Thank you, Ms. Inda. Here is another concern from Sinan Sochu University. The concern is, what are the potential implications of the study's findings for educational policies and practices that is aiming to enhance the career awareness and aspirations among class 12 school students? Okay. In other words, what is the implication in terms of policy practices? My is oh, I'm sorry. Uh, research saya ini untuk membantu siswa kelas 12 untuk membuat suatu keputusan, memilih prodi dalam memutuskan masuk ke perguruan tinggi negeri. Oke, okay, baik Bu. Um, pertanyaannya terkait, um, apa sih implikasinya terhadap policy uh, di educational? Peraturannya, oh. Bu. Gimana Mbak, bisa diulang lagi Mbak? Bagaimana dari studi ini, apa sih implikasi potensial yang akan berimpak pada uh, peraturan pendidikan dan secara praktis um, dapat meningkatkan kesadaran terhadap karir dari um, murid kelas 12 SMA? Uh, in, ini 
untuk di pendidikan ini membantu guru bimbingan konseling dalam memberikan kemudahan dalam uh, teknologi uh, online, konseling secara online dalam pemberian asesmen karir. All right. So Miss Edda answered that this research will provide an implication to help the 12th grade um, high school student to select the university and the major that they want to um, select for the future studies. And also for the policy, especially for the counseling teacher, it can help uh, them to do an online assessment and also will impact uh, the 12th grade uh, high school student in selecting the university later on. Thank you, Ms. Inda. Of course, I hope it satisfies and address the question from Susco University. Okay. Because there are no other questions here. So shall we proceed to the next presenter? Presenter number four. Okay, thank you, Dr. Gina. Thank you, Ms. Inda. Our next presenter is having this research study, the title on pragmatic analysis of Chinese and Spanish thank you emails and its implication for teaching Chinese as a second language. Please help me welcome our next presenter, Xianhui Ching. Over to you, sir, Shan Wee. Okay. Uh, first one, uh, let me put on my PPT slide. Thank you. Uh, can you see me my PPT slide now? Yes, we can see the, the background page of the conference. Okay, thank you. Okay, hello, my name is Jingwei Zheng. I'm honored here to present the study conducted with Professor Da Ling Xie and the research assistant Bo Qingyu. We are from Graduate Institute of Teaching Chinese as the Second Language, National Taiwan Normal University, Taipei, Taiwan. The title of the research I'm going to present is A Pragmatic Analysis of Chinese and Spanish Thank You Emails and Its Implications for Teaching Chinese as a Second Language. First, I would like to introduce the background of our study. According to previous research, pragmatic competence is critical in conveying gratitude effectively. However, mastering this skill can pose challenges for second language learners, including those at advanced proficiency levels. By conducting cross-language analysis, we aim to identify the pragmatic conventions unique to different languages and utilize this insight to inform, to inform instructional design. Based on the aforementioned background, the purpose of this study is to compare expressions of gratitude in Chinese and Spanish within the context of email communication while also considering social status factors. By doing so, 
we expect to offer insights to into writing pedagogies for Spanish learners of Chinese. As for the research method methodology, we began by conducting an online survey to assess the importance of email writing proficiency among Spanish learners of Chinese. The results revealed that over 70% of the participants expressed a desire to enhance their abilities in composing Chinese emails. Next, we employed a Discord completion test and collected thank you emails from 55 Chinese native speakers and 14 Spanish native speakers written in their respective languages. Participants were instructed to assume the role of a university student and compose emails thanking individuals for their assistance in completing a report. Each participant wrote two emails, one addressed to their professor, one of higher social status, and the other email to a classmate, one with equal social status. So in total, we gathered 138 emails. Then we utilize MOOC structure theory to, ana to analyze the pragmatic strategies employed in the emails, taking into account the influence of social status in both languages. As you can see here, here are sample data of Chinese and Spanish emails with MOOC marked in different colors. Through this analysis, we observe that email typically consists of multiple moves, and the combination and the sequence of these moves reveal the pragmatic strategy of each language. The results of the analysis reveal both similarities and differences between Chinese and Spanish thank you emails. Regard, regarding similarity, the first point to note is that emails in both languages exhibit the same microstructure, consisting of three main sections, opening, body, and closing. In each section, contains various moves. The second Similarity lies in the structure of the openings and closings. Both languages feature salutations and greetings in their openings, while their closings commonly include blessing, expressing respect, and signature. Here are examples of this move in Chinese and Spanish emails. As you can see here in the right, uh, right two columns of the table, The third similarity is that when addressing recipients of higher social status, participants in both languages tend to include more moves, especially expressions of expectations and expressions of respect. Another similarity is evident in the body of the email, where both languages feature the primary move of thinking serving as the core component that fulfills the communication purpose. In addition, there are five auxiliary moves common to both languages, explaining the reasons, acknowledging the recipient's contribution, offering reciprocity, expressing expectations, and thinking again. Notably, Acknowledging the recipient's contribution and expressing gratitude again are employed more frequently than the other moves. However, there are also cross-language differences. The first difference lies in the body of the email, where each language exhibits its unique moves. For example, Chinese emails may include moves such as introducing oneself, apologizing, and considering the recipient situation, while Spanish email may feature moves like, like explaining details. 
Our data also indicates differences in the type of move used and how they are influenced by the recipient's social status, as shown in the table. Chinese emails feature a broader range of smooth types, with social status exerting a more pronounced impact. Specifically, when writing to someone of higher social status, Chinese emails tend to use a greater number of moves, particularly those expressing expectations. On the other hand, when writing to someone of the same social status, Chinese emails tend to emphasize offering reciprocity. In contrast, this influence is less apparent in Spanish emails, indicating that social status has less impact on them. Based on the findings of the aforementioned research, we propose teaching recommendations specifically tailored for Spanish-speaking Chinese learners. Firstly, we suggest enhancing the pragmatic awareness of Spanish learners of Chinese in email writing. Secondly, we recommend helping learners to recognize the similarity and disparities between their native and target languages. We believe that with these insights, learners will be able to communicate more effectively and appropriately in the target language, particularly in the context of computer-mediated communication. The limitation of our study is that uh, we solely analyze thank you emails. Moving forward, we could broaden our scope to explore electronic communication for various purposes. By doing so, we can enhance our understanding in this area and better cater to the practical needs of language teaching. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you, Mr. Son Yui. Thank you for that information that you have relayed to us related to the practical analysis and the implications of Chinese and Spanish students as their second language in emailing thank you messages. I think we don't have questions posted in our chat box, but personally, I just wanted, ah, there is one. There's one from our co-pilot, <laughs> Miss Vidyuritno. She has a question here. How do the pragmatic features of thank you emails in Chinese and Spanish differ and what, that's the first concern. How do these messages differ? Second is, what implication do these differences have for the teaching of Chinese as a second language, particularly in terms of email etiquette and cultural nuisance. Okay, for the first question, uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, let me show my uh, PowerPoint again. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, uh, can you see the PowerPoint now? Uh, sorry? Uh, it see? is visible here, uh, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, um, about the difference of the pragmatic strategy um, in, between Chinese and Spanish, uh, we can see here in this page, uh, we have language specific move, uh, mainly in the body. Uh, uh, like uh, before mentioned, um, the Chinese emails uh, tend to use um, introducing oneself and apologizing uh, in the 
um, in the body section at the beginning in the study section. But the Danish one, uh, we have no evidence uh, data to show that uh, the Spanish females used these two steps, a move step. Uh, and explaining details, vice versa, uh, we can see uh, the Spanish ones uh, use some uh, moves that explain the detail of the email. But in the Chinese email, we uh, don't have this uh, moves data in our corpus. So uh, this is the difference uh, between the two languages that uh, that shows the, the difference of, of the pragmatic strategy. Uh, is that uh, okay for you? Yes, it's clearly asked for my question. Okay. Uh, yes. I, let's see the, the second question. So you are clarified with that, Miss Widio and Rinto. Yes. <laughs> I cannot pronounce properly. It's all right, Dr. Jaina. Okay. Now we proceed to the next concern here with me, Maria Asusina Conde. She said, what is the background and the context of your research topic? Uh, could you brief us the rationale why you conducted this research? Okay, because, uh, because, uh, the background is, uh, uh, is uh, we all know that email is nowadays the most um, used means of uh, uh, computer mediated communication the personal communication tools so uh, we decide to uh, choose the, the email to analyze the pr uh, pragmatic an um, analysis in, in order to find out what uh, is embedded in the email section uh, in order to offer um, some pedagogy for the second language learners of Chinese. But, uh, and this time we choose the Spanish one because the Spanish language is different than Chinese. The, the, they are uh, different uh, language types. So we think uh, there might be some difference and uh, uh, surprisingly, there are some uh, 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 in, some difference and the similarities. Yeah. Sorry, Doctor Jaina, you still on mute? Sorry, I I had muted that one. I hope Ms. Maria Zina has. The question answered for you. I hope you had a satisfaction for that insight from the researcher. There's another here, one last question. How can the research impact the teaching of Chinese Mandarin? Okay, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, according to our research, uh, we show the similarity and disparity uh, in email writing, uh, the structure and the microstructure of the uh, two languages of email writing. So uh, we suggest the uh, teachers that uh, teach uh, uh, teach, uh, teaching Chinese as a second language teacher would uh, take advantage of our research results and that they could uh, apply to their uh, pedagogy or their syllabus. Uh, like um, they can also design some, some um, discourse completion work that uh, the learners of Chinese that could be uh, practiced, and uh, then the teachers of the teaching second language as uh, Chinese uh, could be 
um, aware that the situation of the students and then they could uh, optimize the, their uh, pedagogy. Yeah, that's my opinion. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Sean Wee. I hope all our attendees who raised other questions had given justification of the answers and these replies are actually enlightening to us, not only to the, the attendees, but also to other researchers also at this time. So thank you so much, Mr. Sean Wei, for the contribution in this fourth ICLIT conference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our last but not the least, next presenter is Professor Yeti Sainil for the research title, Barry's Taxonomy for Developing Reading Comprehension Questions in EFL Classrooms, the results of Stimulated Recall Interview. Please help me welcome our presenter, Professor Yeti Sanil. Um, all right, so uh, good day, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gina. Um, allow me to say screen. All right, so um, so, sorry. Okay, so um, my research title is Barrett's Taxonomy for Developing Reading Comprehension Questions in EFL Classrooms. So the results of stimulated recall interview. <laughs> so, uh, this study, based on the premise that the English teachers, the English as a foreign language teachers, so they need to develop their hearts reading comprehensions. And for this one, what commonly used is the Bloom taxonomy to consider the level of cognitive difficulty. And in Indonesia, same things happen that schools in Indonesia refer to the Bloom's revised taxonomy, which is uh, you know, Anderson and Crowell, 2001, uh, to be used in schools in uh, Indonesia. Now, actually, there is another, um, sorry. Right, in developing reading comprehensions, there is another taxonomy, which is um, actually, which is really, proposed to be used as a guide in developing uh, reading comprehension tasks uh, proposed by Barrett in 1972. However, little is known about the EFL teacher's understanding of this Barrett taxonomy. Now, um, in 2021, I did a research looking at the teacher's um, uh, competence in designing or in developing reading comprehension, what I found is that 
based on the interview and also based on the um, analysis of the questions that they make, they said that it's difficult to, for them to, you know, develop reading comprehension using the Bloom taxonomy uh, because um, this Bloom taxonomy is actually for all subjects and it is not uh, detailed things if you use it for developing reading comprehension questions. So my in my research, I suggest that Barrett taxonomy to be used uh, because uh, this is actually intended to be used as a guide in developing reading comprehension question. So few literature that I found, so Kitriak and also Gocher and also Ahmed and also Aglina, Dana, Amelia, that uh, looking at the better taxonomy already, but they're not yet talking about the uh, mm -hmm. teacher's uh, opinion, understanding um, of the better taxonomy. So if we look at, we compare now uh, looking at Bloom taxonomy and better taxonomy. So this Bloom taxonomy, especially in Indonesia, is used for all subjects. And this is the curriculum uh, which is suggested to be used. Um, now, because this, um, you know, Bloom taxonomy is too general, actually. So it leaves out some important details uh, for developing reading comprehension questions. Then uh, this actually, this, uh, you know, the taxonomy is um, consists of five level, but each level they divide it into more detail. And uh, in my research, this is this article is part of my big research. Well, I'm looking at the students' worksheets or LKS. So this students' worksheet is used in the classroom to help teachers and students to be able to develop critical thinking. So from the um, reading classes. So that's why um, I look at this uh, and with the question, sorry. So with the question, so which levels of cognitive process reading comprehension questions are predominant in the teach in the LKS or students' worksheet? And what are the teachers' understanding and opinions about the use of better taxonomy in developing reading comprehension questions? So, so I propose the uh, better taxonomy because they are a bit, you know, uh, detail like this one. So the level. So this is the guide for uh, developing questions. And then it's, uh, um, you know, a, a detail. So compared to Bloom taxonomy. So I, I think I just go quick with this one. So data is the reading comprehension, all the reading co comprehension question found in the um, worksheet for five semesters. And then uh, this one and the uh, participant is uh, six teachers senior high school teachers in Kota Padang, West Sumatra, Indonesia. So the instrumentation, so we've got two here. So one is the checklist to uh, have a look at the uh, level of uh, questions found in the reading comprehension questions. And second one is the stimulated recall interview. So I focus on this um, instrument, stimulated recall interview, to see the teacher's opinion and understanding of the better taxonomy. So stimulated recall interview is used to look at uh, what teacher's opinion, but it is not a pure interview, but it's based on the uh, analysis of the worksheets or, or the LKS. Then um, I just go through quickly with this one. So that's I did. So reading the questions and then list it, the question, classify them. And then, um, so this is LKS or students worksheet for five semesters in senior high school. And then the second data is the stimulated recall interview with teachers. So three teachers actually is the um, writers of the LKS. And um, it is transcribed, let's go and write. So the data one is that the reading comprehension questions were analyzed by using by Barrett taxonomy. And then uh, this is the point that I like also to emphasize that if you use the Bloom taxonomy, they don't have the standards. How much is the cost? How much is the marks or middle 
um, uh, or how much is a low or low level uh, thinking, critical things. But then ballot taxonomy suggests to use um, reefs. And just now then I'm saying, we're saying that literal comprehension and reorganization labels should be 40% of the questions. And then inferential stage should be 40%, while the other, the hot ones, actually only 20% for, you know, to be given for the students. So that's the data one. And then data two is the um, uh, interview transcript from the teachers. Now, what I have here is this is the percentage. So uh, literal level, organization level, which is should be 40% according to Reeves, and then apparential should be 40% according to Reeves, but I got 48%. And what about the evaluation and appreciation, which suggested by Reeves should be 20% at least. So, but here what we have is only, uh, you know, uh, 0 0.3 and then 1.6. So this is the, the, the level. And I look at 1,021 reading comprehension question given for five semesters in the LKS. So this is the result. And the discussion here is that this is probably why that the students cannot answer Hobbes question because that they are given most of the low level of questions, which is targeting only at the, you know, uh, literal, uh, it's almost literal uh, questions. You know, the question which not, does not need thinking, lots of thinking to answer the question. So probably this is the, uh, the, the you know, the problem that we face. I, I, I believe that all of us teachers here have the same problems or face the same problems. So um, this is the, because in, you can look at here, so it's not, you know, as suggested by uh, Reeves. So by having this um, data and I go to the second findings or the second research question, is that looking at the teacher's understanding and opinion. So um, in the stimulated to go interview, I show the teachers the level, the classification of the questions that they give to the students. And then look at, uh, they do realize that, oh, we are given only small portion of hot question then. And then I introduce to them, or I ask them, that we, the team, asked them to, you know, what they think about the better taxonomy. And then they said that it, it's not a new one. I do, I did remember it before when I was in college, but then because that the um, curriculum uh, suggested me to use the Bloom taxonomy, and then I get used to Bloom taxonomy, even though for reading comprehension questions. So this is the, um, the answer. So then after asking them and then they answer and then we um, describe to them so reading uh, better taxonomy is this 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 and this is the so giving them the knowledge of better taxonomy so this is another important from the research so it's not for the researcher itself the advantage but also for the participant itself so that's actually I think the um advantage of using the stimulated recall interview. So, um, and uh, and one of the, this is the respondent, they say in front of interview that teachers knows about the taxonomy, but she did not understand it. So uh, another participant responded to saying that I don't understand with this barrett taxonomy, but because that you describe them to me, you explain them to me that I, I do understand it now. So I think that Bloom taxonomy, and I'm sorry, Barrett taxonomy is more specific and a detail, and that it's easy to be used as the um, guide for developing reading comprehension question. So, and the conclusion of this one is that reading comprehension, you know, this one here, um, the workbook covers all cognitive levels of better taxonomy, so the five level. However, the distribution is not as what Reeve suggested, which is 
um, you know, inferential and reorganization, 40%, I'm sorry, inferential, I'm sorry, literal and reorganization, 40%, um, inferential, 40%, appreciation, and also evaluation, uh, 20%. And one of the things that we also uh, found in this research is that uh, actually, the new curriculum, Curriculum Merdeka, suggested to use or to um, evaluate the students' appreciation to up to the level of appreciation using the Marzano and Kendall 2007. And then we, we found out that better taxonomy cover all you know, the, uh, the, the appreciation level. So what I, we suggested here, the team is that, especially for the EFL teachers, in developing reading comprehension question, then please use the direct taxonomy instead of, uh, you know, Bloom taxonomy. So this is the opinion. And then, so the conclusion is that direct taxonomy is not well known among the teachers um, because uh, they are accustomed or used to, uh, or suggested to use the uh, Bloom taxonomy. Now, for reading comprehension, they mentioned that they will use the, you know, better taxonomy um, in developing reading comprehension questions. I think that would be all. If any questions, that feel free to ask me. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Professor Yeti. That's insightful. And actually, it will give benefit to not only to other researchers, but also to us teachers who are uh, most likely dominant attendees here are teachers. So we can explore this type of results and insights that you have shared to yes. us this conference. Thank you Hopefully. so much. Hopefully. Thank you. I think there is no question here. <laughs> <laughs> Am I lucky or not? <laughs> well cited, well presented. Does it mean like that? All right. Okay. I so, just have a positive view that uh, hopefully the participants understand or got my message. So there will be no questions. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, <laughs> Professor Yeti. Yeah, okay. I right. hope to see this result in the, not only in the abstract of proceedings, but also in the proper research publication journal. Oh, thank you. I hope so. Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah. Okay, that ends our presentation for the different tracks. I hope researchers will be encouraged to, of course, proceed to the next process of your output that will be for the publication thank you so much and thank you for having me here in this fourth ICLET conference over to you miss with your no all right thank you very much for our session chair dr gina who already provides such a really really insightful and also help to deliver all the questions that coming in here uh, we hope that all the questions that answered through this session can provide new insight to all of us. And also, due to the time constraint, we are sorry because some question is unanswered yet. However, don't worry about this because the committee will help to accommodate by delivering this unanswered question to the presenters and also help to accommodate the discussion outside this online presentation session to the RSF Global Community Network. So for all the participants and also attendees in this fourth ICLAT, ensure that you are joining the RSF Global Community Network so we can continue our discussion and also um, having more insight by uh, doing collaboration. It might happen through the RSF Global Community Network. All right, moving on to the next agenda. After we heard all the presenters that already provide their best in presenting their paper, let us give their certificate as the appreciation. So in this moment, we I would like to call our founder and director of Global Network Operation, 
Mrs. Santi Rahmawati. Mrs. Santi, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Miss Letno. All right, so for Miss Santi, you may giving the certificate to all our presenters that already pre providing their best in presenting their paper today. Please, Miss Santi. Okay, thank you. So once again, congratulations to all five presenters. So all of you already give your best effort yeah, in delivering your research. And also we already have some discussions and I believe, and also uh, thank you so much to all of the attendee or the audience that already asking the question or even giving the feedback yeah, or the comment yeah, to the presenters. And do not worry that the uh, question which is not yet addressed, we will continue in our global research ecosystem community platforms. Okay, so here's the time for the recognitions and also the appreciations to all five presenters in the fourth ICLAT 2024. So for the first uh, presenter, so we would like to congratulate for uh, Miss Nguyen Huang Mai from Vietnam National University that already presenting her research paper titled Sequencing Relationship Among Coworkers Support Professional Coping Job Satisfactions, the Case Study of the School Teacher. So once again, congratulations, Miss Nguyen Huang Mai. Okay, so and for the second presenter, so congratulations, sir, for uh, Mr. Taslim Kalang from the Computer of Indonesian University that already presenting his research title, Evaluation of Early Childhood Education, Learning to Enhance Basic Competency Needs Adaptively with K-Means Methods and R and N G R U approach. So congratulations, Mr. Taslim. Okay, and the next uh, presenter, we would like to congratulate to uh, Miss Enda Setianingsi. Mrs. Enda Setianingsi, congratulations. Ibu, for your presentations on the manuscript and title analysis of Smart Apes Creator or SAC Media Needs as an Effort to Increase Career Self-Awareness for Advanced Study for High School Students. So congratulations, Ms. Enda. Okay, and for the next presenter, thank you so much and congratulations to Mr. Sean Wei Seng, sorry if I missed <laughs> spelling your name, from Vietnam a National a University. So I think that the Taiwan, right? If I'm not mistaken. Okay, for the manuscript and title, a pragmatic analysis of Chinese and Spanish thank you emails and its implication for teaching Chinese as a second language. So thank you so much, sir for presenting your research in Fort Eichlet. Thank you so much. And of course, our last presenters with the excellent presentations. Congratulations, uh, Professor Yeti Zainil from Universitas Negeri Padang for sharing her research with us entitled Barrett's Taxonomy for Developing Reading Comprehension Question in EFL Classroom, the result of stimulated recall interview. Thank you so much, Prof, for being with us in the Fort Island. Okay, so thank you so much and congratulations to the all presenters. Back to Ms. Retna. All right, thank you, Ms. Santi, who already giving the certificate to all of our presenters. And in this moment, I also want to sincerely congratulate to all the presenters who are already presenting their pairs papers and also provide their best effort in doing the research. Also, thank you to all audience and participants who already participated and actively involved in giving the question, comment, feedback, and even suggestion to the presenters. Your active participation and contribution in the scientific forum of the fourth ICLAT is highly appreciated. Then after hearing the excellent presentation from different topic and issue, in this opportunity, we would like to invite the representative in this room 
to share the experience in participating at the conference. So the purpose of this section is to encourage other scholars, students, academicians, and practitioners to join the upcoming scientific forum or conference like today. So in this moment, I would like to invite one of our presenters, Ms. Enda Setianingsi. Are you still there? All right. Hello, Ms. Enda. Can you? Okay. Yes, I'm here. All right. Would you mind to share your experience regarding today's conference with Enda? Yes, I was very happy with the ICLEC conference and really learning from this activity. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Miss Enda. And also, um, I would like to invite our another presenters, Mr. Chun Wei Fang. Hello, Mr. Chun Wei Fang. Hello, hello. Hello. Would yeah, you mind I, to share your feel... experience? Yeah, I feel really honored to uh, be here and uh, be able to present our uh, study uh, in the ICLET for yeah, and um, and I also learned a lot from the other presenters um, because the um, they are from different um, um, field of my profession, so uh, I also learned a lot from them. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Chun Wei. Next, maybe for the last representative in this session, uh, I would like to call the last presenter, Professor Yeti. Would you mind to share your experience regarding today's conference in fourth I class? Um, uh, okay, thank you very much, uh, moderator. It's a very fruitful conference. And I believe that I will share the link to my friends, to my college, and also to uh, my students as well, because um, it's really uh, accommodating, you know, especially it, it's sometimes for the students, it's really hard to find the, the uh, you know, the good um, conference to be, you know, to attend with. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate for, you know, presenting here in this conference. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Yeti. And also, um, from this session, I, I also hope that all the um, topics that present here also provide a lot of insight to all of us and give many um, new information, especially in the education topic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and attendees of the fourth ICLAP, once again, please don't forget to fill the feedback form that can uh, be can be accessed through the bit.ly slash fourth iclad dash feedback form. The committee also already typed the uh, link of the form through the Zoom chat box. So please check it out. Next, allow me to read some important information. For the committee, would you mind to help me to share the screen? All right, thank you. So next, allow me to read some important information related to the post-conference or the publication. The information for the fourth iCloud publication opportunity is stated on the website on www.icloudconference.com. Please pay attention to the timeline and process that the author must do in order to complete the post-conference process and get the international journal. So it's day plus seven or April 2nd, 2024. After the conference finished, the author who wants to proceed to the publication process must send or upload their final full paper. The full paper needs to have 5,000 until 7,000 words following the guidelines stated on the conference website. Once again, please pay attention to the timeline. It's day plus seven. Author can send the extended full paper to their account at resourcesynergysystem.com under the menu of conference day, then click upload full paper. 
The full paper will undergo the scientific review process to determine your journal recommendation for publication. All accepted papers have opportunity to be published in reputable international journals indexed by Scopus, Web of Science, EBSCO, Copernicus, Google Scholars, or Dimension, where terms and conditions applied and selected by scientific editorial and reviewer committee. Furthermore, the committee of the fourth IQAP is committed to give added value for all conference participants by providing the forum for discussion in the Global Research Ecosystem Community Platform. By joining this community platform, you will gain more benefit and can interact, connect, and do the research collaboration ahead. Therefore, please visit globalresearchecosystem.com or scan the QR barcode that will show later on. Next information is about how to claim and get the e certificate for the fourth iCloud for attendee. Firstly, please sign up or log in to the bit.ly slash join dash global research dash ecosystem to participate in the conference. Then click to the events menu and change the status into going for the fourth iCloud. The committee will only send the e certificate to the participants who confirm on going to the event. So don't forget to get your e certificate through the community platform. Once again, to join, simply scan the QR code or please sign up to bit.ly slash join dash global research dash ecosystem to be a member of the global research ecosystem. Now, we will continue our agenda for the awarding session to know the best presentation and session chair recognition. So for the excellently distinguished guest delegates, ladies and gentlemen, we will entering our last session of awarding ceremony of the fourth iCloud. Thank you very much for all you staying with us until the last session in this conference. And as we have already informed before, by the end of today's conference, we will announce the best presentation, best paper awards, and also the recognition for the session chairs today. The first awarding session is the best presentation award. The session chair had selected the best presentation based on several criterions in the assessment form. Thank you very much for all of our presenters today that gave their efforts in delivering the research through the presentation. There is one best presentation for today's conference on this occasion. Therefore, we would like to give a special token of appreciation and recognition to the best presentation. Kindly, please welcome Mrs. Santi Rahmawati as the founder and director of Global Network Operation Research Negative Foundation as the conference chair of fourth iCloud to give away a certificate as the token of appreciation and recognition to the best presenter of the fourth iCloud. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Ratno. So uh, once again, congratulations to all uh, presenters in the fourth iCloud. So all of you already done a really good job. And actually, Ms. Ratno, we just uh, check, cross-check again that um, there is a two uh, presenters, yeah? So two presenters because they got the same score. They got the same score. So that's why this is a very special. So in this fourth iCloud, there, there are two best presentations based on the session chair's evaluation forms, yeah? Because all of them or two of them get the same score. Okay. So who will be the best presentations? The best presenter. Okay, so once again, to the best presenter of the fourth iCloud. So congratulations to Professor Yeti Zainil from Universitas Negeri Padang, Indonesia. So once again, congratulations bro, you. for your achievement. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yeah. so looking forward for your full paper, yeah, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the next best presenter. Okay. So for the next best presenter in the fourth iCloud is Miss Guyen Phuong Mai from. Vietnam National University. So congratulations for Ms. Nguyen for your achievement in the fourth iCloud 2024. Congratulations to all best presenters. Okay, back to Ms. Ratno. 
All right. Thank you very much, Miss Santi. It's quite surprising that in today's conference, there will be two best presenters. And also, um, after we heard about the best presenter, we will moving on to our next award category. Um, is for the session chair recognition. Therefore, on behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to appreciate and thank the session chair today with her contribution during the presentation session, the scientific forum, feedback discussion, and also knowledge sharing environment that has been built to encourage participation from all the participants. Therefore, kindly please welcome again Mrs. Santi Rahmawati as the founder and director of Global Network Operation. Research Synergy Foundation to give the token appreciation to the session chair involved in the fourth iCloud and also give away certificate and token appreciation to the session chair. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ratno. Okay, so once again, congratulations. So uh, this is our uh, gratitude to have uh, assistant professor, Dr. Gina, uh, to be the session chair. So this is the the moment of giving the appreciation and also recognitions to you, Assistant Professor Dr. Gina Gure Jackson from Gulf College Sultanate of Oman in recognition and also appreciation of your contribution as the session chair at the fourth international conference on language, education, and teaching research or fourth islet. 2024, March 26, 2024. So congratulations and thank you so much for your support and also for the moderating the sessions of the today's conference at Fort Isla. So looking forward for more collaborations with you. All right, thank you once again to our session chair today, Assistant Professor Dr. Gina Gori jackson from Gulf College Sultanate of Oman for the great involvement in today's conference. We would like again to remind to all participants to kindly fill the feedback form of the fourth iCloud in the link that is shown on the screen, or you can simply scan the barcode that's shown in your screen. We are sure that the discussion in this international conference today can continue to a more lively discussion in the global network research ecosystem. Therefore, we will provide all the participants and attendees to discuss further about the research presented in the fourth iCloud in our global research ecosystem community platform. In the platform, you can connect, interact, comment, discuss, and even find opportunity to collaborate with other scholars in your research field worldwide. To join the Research Synergy Foundation community platform, simply scan the QR code or you can sign up using your email account on this link of https globalresearchecosystem.com. So ladies and gentlemen, we have finished the International Conference on Language Education and Teaching Research or fourth iCloud. To give the closing remark, we would like to invite again Mrs. Santi Rahmawati, STMSM, as the founder and director of Global Network Operation, Research Synergy Foundation. Therefore, please welcome Mrs. Santi. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Retno. So, Excellency, uh, part uh, participants, presenters, attendees, ladies and gentlemen, so I am very honored and delighted to deliver the concluding remark of the fourth International Conference on Language, Education and Teaching Research for ICLAB. So organized by Research Energy Foundation, supported by Scholar Vein, Reviewer Track, Research Energy Institute, Research Energy Press, F1000 Research, Cohesion Open Access Journals, and Taylor and Francis Group. So the committee has successfully hosted the event. And also, I believe that during the conference, all of us will have an insightful, interactive, and also the discussion. And moreover, we'll have a great chance to share a uh, chance to share the outcome of our research. So I would like also to thank to all the participants, the keynote speakers, the reviewers, the presenters, the attendees, the session chairs from various countries who have already given their best commitment and also contributions in the third ICLAB. And next also my sincere gratitude and thank you finally to all the committee members for their hard work. Therefore, let me wish all of our energy enthusiasm, shared trust, and resolve on our way toward achieving a better future for all. 
So to conclude, thank you so much once again to all your great contribution, involvement. And I hope and we hope that the knowledge and thought that being shared in this conference, it will create a new network, a new friendship that will be fruitful for all of us and could increase also our academic yet professional development in the future. So see you in the upcoming events. So keep in touch in the globalresearchecosystem.com. So thank you so much for your kind attentions and stay safe and also stay healthy. All right, thank you, Miss Santi. So finally, we are at the end of the International Conference on Language Education and Teaching Research for IQED. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants and attendees, we hope it has been a beneficial and fruitful day for all of you. Thank you very much, all the distinguished participants, for taking the time to join us on the International Conference on Language Education and Teaching Research for IQED virtually. It has been our pleasure to host this virtual conference event. So see you again on the next conference and please take a good rest, stay healthy and safe. Thank you and see you again. Thank you everyone. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, goodbye. Thank goodbye. you, bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.